I'd like to call a meeting to order. 5.31. And um, do we have any changes or additions to the agenda? We do. Can I, oh, can I sorry. Ask a question: Are we <laughs> opening the liquor and tobacco meeting or the first? Meeting? Yeah, we'll, we'll be doing that. I think we're gonna we do liquor first. Yeah. We're gonna do, we do. I think we have to do this meeting and then we go liquor control and we come back out. No, no it's a total meeting now. It's a total meeting now. Yeah. We may do liquor first. To start, yeah. So we're opening the liquor so, meeting just to yes. clear. Yes. Okay. So we're not doing <coughs> agenda changes yet, are we? Not for our regular meeting. We're opening up the liquor. Uh, liquor okay, meeting. so no changes. No changes to the liquor. Meeting. All right, thank you. Okay. I'll approve the minutes of May fifteenth, twenty twenty-three. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from May fifteenth, twenty twenty-three. I'll second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm going to abstain because I wasn't here. Um, okay. Liquor license application. So Sarah's at a training or a conference, so I told her I would speak to this. Uh, we just have one application. It's from ABC Cinemas LLC, which is the, the Bijou. I did speak to the owners, and they're just trying to uh, continue to build a business and want to offer some alcohol. So, do you have any concerns? It is. I have no concerns. Well, they did that before. A number of years ago, they had. Oh, really? They had little round tables in hmm? in one of the theater, hmm. one of the rooms, and it still has a, has alcohol. It's huge. Yeah. 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 Any, um, I don't have any questions. Okay. As long as I can remember. I'll make a motion. We approve the new liquor license application for ABC Cinemas LLC. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. Tobacco license applications? None. Do we have any special event applications? We have none. Okay. Looking for a motion to, to adjourn? So moved. Any second? A second? I'll second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Open up the regular select board meeting. Do we have to do another motion for this? Yes. Okay. Well, no All right. Well, you don't need a motion to open it. You're just opening the meeting. Okay, we're just opening the meeting. All right. Any um, changes or additions to the agenda? Yes. So under new business, number seven, we're going to delete that. And then under old business, number three, we're changing it from budget discussions to finalize budget. And, and before we start, I think I mentioned it at, uh, I don't remember the meeting, was it Thursday's meeting? I think it was Thursday's meeting, that we're having to go into executive session kind of in the middle of the evening, maybe at 6.15, we're not quite sure. And whatever business we don't finish, we will come back after executive session and finish that business before we go into another executive session. Uh, which will end the evening in the business meeting and so on. So just to give you a heads up on that. Um, Judy will stay in the, in the room and Zoom will stay open and you're welcome to stay here because we will uh, adjourn to a conference room upstairs. I just FYI. I have a question on the change of uh, businesses. Uh, you're gonna finalize the budget tonight. You, you really haven't told everybody that you're going to do that, right? I mean, you're just deciding right now that you're going to finalize that. The that, was, I, that was our intent last Thursday. Well, yeah, but that's not what it said on the agenda when you sent this uh, warning out to everybody. So there's nobody out there that realizes that you're going to be signing that budget tonight. Can you do that? Do you really want to do that without letting the people know? Th that that was a discussion we had last week that it's we had to that we would have to do this tonight yeah. in order to uh, sign the warning on th this coming Thursday so we could meet the deadline that we had set up about voting. 
Well, then so I have a question that. for you, Judy. If you, that was a discussion, why isn't it on the old business no, correctly? I don't make that. That was my error, Tom. Well, we have I, to. I wrote, the, I wrote the agenda heading on that, and I wrote down budget discussions. Whether it's finalized or a budget discussion, um, that's why. That's how I worded it. And if it's my attention that I had done it incorrectly. Thank you. It doesn't really matter what why. The, it matters is that the people got what was going on on this meeting tonight, and in no way did it say it was going to be finalized the budget. And therefore, there's a lot of people that would have been here sitting if they had known that. In all fairness, Tom, I. In all fairness. I can, can I? Yes, sir. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm say. In all fairness, I didn't, I didn't think finalizing the budget was going to be on the agenda either. So when there's at least two people in the audience right now that I told them that, that we would have budget discussions, I think we're going to have budget discussions as well. And I, would, I would concur with that. I you know, came here prepared to talk about the budget and answer any last, um, you know, Meeting um, questions and and then move forward later this week. Sunday morning. Then, that includes the person I live with, so I, 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 I didn't I, know this either, Tom. I understand that, and I and I respect this mistakes to be made. We all make mistakes. The fact is that the people who read on front porch forum what was going to be discussed tonight did not know that this was going to be the final time. So there's a lot of people that, for a lot of reasons, aren't here. But they definitely would have been here. They definitely would have been on that Zoom because there's a lot to stake here for the final budget. There is a mistake made. I don't know how you're going to rec to resolve that, but I don't think resolving it is just going ahead and saying that's what we're going to do. As was true of the last two budgets, I'll just say the night that we warn the budget is not a night for discussion. It's usually just the board meets. You've been th we've been through this together okay. twice now, and Thursday night, you know, it, it, it was going to be a formality more than anything else. Whatever See. whatever we came in with that night was going to be See. voted on, just as as it was yeah. oh. back in okay. April and just as it was back in January. <clears throat> that's all I have to tell you. Well, that's fine. I, I don't argue with that. That's not the point, though. The point is this place would have been a lot, would have had more of the community involved. And what you have effectively done is not inform them that this was the last chance. Because you know, we know it's not going to be at, you're correct at the warning, you shouldn't. But this is supposed to be not the last time. We could have technically finalized the budget a week ago. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, that's, I, I, that's hear, I hear what you're saying, but, but I just, I, we're here to discuss it. You're going to get a chance to discuss it. Okay. And then you're going to, uh, my, my, okay, that's, that's fine. I just want to express my concern that there's a lot of people in that community right now left out because. Thank you. Thank you. So I would just like to uh, go over the rules. We, uh, Judy, are you able to do timekeeping today? Yes. Okay. Because yes. we, we, we tried to do that last week, but it didn't work. Yeah. It was a little busy. Yes. Um, uh, rules and procedures for our meeting. Comment by the public or members of the body must be addressed to the chair once they have identified themselves and not to any individual member of the body or public. Members of the public must be acknowledged by the chair before speaking. Members of the public must introduce themselves prior to speaking. If a member of the public has already spoken on a topic, they may not be recognized again until others have first been given the opportunity to comment. Members of the public shall be afforded a maximum of two minutes each time they speak on a topic. Okay, so I'd like to go to approve minutes um, on July 3rd, 2023. A motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from July 3rd, 2023. And a second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'm abstaining. I was not here for that meeting. Um, approved minutes for July 6, 2023. A motion, please. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for 
7623. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes. Um, under new business, uh, set the date for the budget revote. Sarah spent quite a bit of time um, in that meeting, and we had a number of people, um, both administration and staff, as well as participants and guests, where she clearly laid out the time frame for what these budget meetings are going to be, when we're going to sign the warning, which is delineated here as the July 24th. Um, I think it was clear at that meeting, you know, what the time frames were. She laid out various scenarios for us and we chose August 29th as our, as our due date. Um, so I think that in fairness to everybody here, um, that um, it was very clear in that meeting what the time frame was in terms of these meetings as well as when we were going to sign the warning, as when we were going to have the budget vote. I'm wondering though, didn't that- What we hear on Zoom is mumbling. Sorry. Uh, Chris, I'm, I'm, before you go on, I'm wondering if what you said didn't happen at last Thursday's meeting. I don't know. I'm looking at the July yes, 6th. I know. Um, I guess I defer to Judy Alberry. Um, I don't know, because Sarah wrote those notes. Sarah does the ones when she speaks about next club stuff. So I think I understand what you're saying, Chris, that the dates that were presented to you folks from Sarah was for exactly as you said. Right. Yes. So um, all those dates were presented. Do you want more detail in the minutes regarding that, no, or are you just making a point? I just make a point. <laughs> yeah. um, but Judy's question was whether that actually happened on the thirteenth or the sixth. Yeah. I thought we. I thought we, we talked about this on the thirteenth that we had the chart that she'd given us and. I'm just looking at what the yeah, minutes say. Yeah, I know. Uh, no, that was not. It did happen the sixth. Okay. It happened. Okay. So for folks on Zoom, um, my point was that um, to sort of further the conversation or explanation to Tom Cloutier, on July 6, under new business, um, Sarah Haskins, our town clerk treasurer, presented our board with a number of different scenarios with different dates for the for the uh, budget vote, and and as you back date on the uh, dates for the discussion of the budget, the finalizing of the budget, and the warning of the budget, and then uh, the vote on the budget, this board <coughs> decided on August 29th for the, for the vote, which means that um, this warning needs to be signed between July 20th and July 28th. Uh, to meet that deadline. Um, we decided at that point that we would uh, sign the warning on July 20 24th. I think that that date has been moved to July 20th because uh, of various absences from the board's uh, board members and previous commitments. Um, so tonight will be our last discussion of the budget. Uh, we will formalize uh, the warning on July 20th, which would be this Thursday, so that we can meet the August 29th vote. <coughs> I hope that was clear. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. So you're just clarifying, but it's not changing the minutes at all? No, I just was kind of point. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? <coughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. So looking at approving the minutes from July 13th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from July 13th, 2023. I second that. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm, so, um, I'm sorry, Carly, is that Kathy? Yeah. Did you have yeah. a question about did you have a question about the minutes, one of the minutes? I did. Um, so does anybody have the uh, Vermont Select Book handbook there with you? I do. Because on page 30 and um, page 30, um, number two slash D. I don't have the whole thing here. I have a partial, sorry. Kathy, I only have the partial. I'm sorry, I've got the short Reader's Digest version, so I apologize. But well, um, 
so if you if you were to vote tonight to make to pass this, you actually are, are um, it's not legal. So and I would suggest that you print out that full handbook and bring it with you to every meeting. Um, I can. Um, so when considering a deviation from the agenda, the board must balance two competing interests. The public's right to notice and the board's ability to effectively deal with emerging issues in a timely manner. When a select board engages in extensive discussion of issues not included on the agenda or taking binding action on the matter not included in the agenda, uh, it does it does so with risk that the public it does so with risk of the public trust, if not law will be violated. So that's right out of your handbook. OK, thank you, Kathy. Yeah. So um, I have I would have to agree that um, we're going to we're going to hold yeah. off a little bit because. Yeah, they're just I mean, yeah. If when we get to that the agenda or not when we get to that agenda item we can talk about that okay um number one new business approve errors and omissions certificate I thought we did. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Can we, oh, not, not do we do we finalize it? The vote? I got four zero. Okay. Yes. For July thirteenth. July thirteenth? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I did. Thank you. Okay. Um, um is there a discussion? Well, or you just need me to sign this? What's going on? You folks need to sign. Kelly Barnum's here to talk about that if okay. you guys would like. Uh, I think it'd be nice. Yeah, it would be Since nice. he's made the effort to come. My name is Charlie Burnham, and I'm a lister here in your town of Morrisville. You have before you an errors and admission certificate from the listers. There were three properties that uh, there was a error made on the the uh, putting them on the grand list. The first one being Mark Felgar, the uh, Nimrick. When they did the appraisal, they sketched the dwelling in twice, so they had twice the amount of dwelling area. It's an abject error on the on the appraiser's part, and so they've corrected that. The second one is the Rooney's up in Mud City. They had a mobile home and site improvements, which were removed before the statutory date of April 1st, and that was missed at the reappraisal. So that's another error on the appraiser's part. And the third being the Gene Blake Trust. Uh, the appraisers entered the wrong building type which was none, and when in fact there was a single family residence, so that that increases the value some. So in front of us, we only have the, the Rooney. Just the three. Yeah. So I don't know if we have other paperwork we have to sign with that? Yes, it should have a it's form coming, that looks like this. It's coming at your, I, I'm passing it down. Yeah, as we and see. on so the second page, there's a. This, this is all we have to sign? Yes, there's oh, a second okay. page, this you have official. a. Uh, for so the listers to sign. Right. So you need us. You need a motion for this. Correct. So Charlie, obviously the listers are in support of these changes. Yes. Unanimously. Unanimously. Well, I think one of them came before the abatement board too. Yes. Maybe all three. I don't remember, but I know well, one two, did for yeah, sure. Yeah, two of them did, I think. So do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the errors and omission certificate as presented by Charlie Burnham. I would motion and a second. Any discussion? Thank you very much. Oh, 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 we have to vote. All those in oh, favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> now we've approved it. Thank you. Now we can move on. All right. I'll sign this after. Okay. Um, accept resignation of paramedic. Paula Beatty, Human Resources Director. Um, you have her resignation letter in the packet. She is leaving. Um, she has a full-time job. This is a part-time position, and she could no longer um, keep up with the schedule. want to thank her for her service, and she would like to stay on as a volunteer. 
Okay. Yeah, we didn't. We don't have a letter. We just have the. Uh, um, it's it's cut. It's just a memo. Yeah, we don't. Have yeah, we don't have a letter. That's okay. So, so just to be clear, Paula, uh, we're looking to accept the resignation, resignation, and also to approve her as a volunteer in, in for EMS. Okay. I can make that motion to accept the resignation of Kelly Mayo, MEMS paramedic, effective July 31st, 2023, and to approve her as a volunteer for the Morristown EMS. I that. A motion, a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. Okay. Um, so, Jason, I'm looking to you when you would like to call executive session. You do it right now. Okay. So, we someone want to read that? I can make a mo I'll make a motion to that we move into executive session because I find that premature general public knowledge of pending or probable civil litigation or prosecution to which the public body is or may be party will clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage by disclosing its negotiation strategy. I have a motion a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, we'll we have a second. One more. One, yeah, one more. more. Luno into executive session and Jim Barlow. Yes, please. Okay. I move to go into executive session to discuss the pending and probable litigation or prosecution under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statutes to include Interim Town Administrator Jason Luno and our town lawyer. I just said Jim Barlow, James Barlow. Get to the microphone. Oh, Got a second? I'll second. second. Got a motion and a second? Oh, Laura, second. Yeah. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Okay. Guys, if you folks go upstairs to the staff room. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to come back into session. So we went out. I'm not used to doing this, but to come back into ex to um, select board meeting mode, right? Have to get a motion to come back in. You need to adjourn executive session if you didn't we, already. We did yeah. already. Yep. Okay. That's so, you're all set. So we don't have to make another motion to come back in. Okay. Nope. Thank you. Do that. Um, number I four. Apologize for interrupting you, but. You guys are not speaking into the microphone, and it's really hard for us to hear. Okay, thank you. Is that better? Well, how about Dan? You talk. Sorry. Can can, can you hear me? I can hear you, but when 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 you need to pass the mic. Okay. Thank you, Henry. You're right. welcome. Number four under new business. Approve. Right. I'm sorry. Approve ex existing pay scale with applied CPW increase. So this, oh, Paul, you're speaking to this. All right. Thank you. Human Resources Director Paula Beatty. Um, the last year's pay. So the pay scale that you have in front of you is the last year approved pay scale with the 8.7 percent cola applied to it per your approval of the longevity policy. How you decide to move forward with the longevity policy is a future discussion. This is just you approving that 8.7 being applied to that pay scale. This is just, we're just finalizing it. Basically a decision we made at the end you of You made a decision to approve the longevity policy and to move forward with the 8.7% COLA. I have taken that approval and applied it to the pay scale um, and just, it's just, so that I have a approved pay scale is what we're and it reflects what we're paying um, individuals. Okay, thank you. But just for clarification, Paula, this this actually doesn't go in effect until we approve the budget, correct? Goes into effect per uh, the attorney on July first because you approved the longevity policy. That was the whole process oh, okay. of approving That's the longevity policy. Okay. Okay. Yep. 
Just clarify. And ha if you amend that policy going forward to have a cap in a and a, a ceiling okay. and a floor okay. that is a completely different that has no impact on this in the future it would but. okay that makes sense thank okay. you okay so could I have a, uh, entertain a motion I'll make a motion to approve the existing pay scale with the applied CPIW increase and Judy and, and uh, authorize Judy to sign as the uh, chair. I would say. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes. Uh, I would uh, yes. request Introduce that you. Yourself. My name is Tom Cloutier. I would request that you put an amendment in here uh, that uh, you allow merit uh, bonuses or raises or performance bo bonus raises. And I want to give you an example. We have an EMS worker who has certificates longer than my arm. In fact, uh, we'll talk about him later. But uh, he has actually gone out and saved a child's life. But the child was born uh, dead, and he resuscitated that child back to life. And he's got a state rewards and everything else. And I'm sure he got thank you for you guys, and he's thankful for me. And he tried to take that to the bank for a raise or anything, and it didn't do anything. He got nothing. And he gets paid less than anybody in this building. And this man goes out and saves lives. So I would think that for a performance like that, that or a merit because he has more certificates and I think more certificates than anybody in this uh, in this county. And by the way, we're in danger of losing this devil. If we allow, if we amend this to give these merit bonuses or raises even, performances, at least we could re reward this fella for something that he's done is pretty good that nobody in this building is going to get the chance to do, I hope. But if it does come to that, this man is the good man you want. And by not doing anything for him, I think it's a, I think it's a shame. And all you got to do, you, can, you have the power, is to say, okay, we'll give merit bonuses and we'll give merit on our merit increases in their salaries because there's people out there that deserve it thank you i do know that um that you know we have talked about um and i have talked about it is uh doing a complete revision of the longevity and addressing it um because because we can't the discussion was is because we're under contract with the police and highway and that to start making changes but um, i mean that was my understanding that and i have you know i would like to address that i just i'm not sure that we can do it on the fly here okay, well she just said you could you could change it no, i mean it's scale you can change it's not the plan yeah why can't we don't well why can't we change things why can't we i've got children in the kindergarten that tell me that they can't do something, 15 minutes later, they're doing it. Come on, folks, we can do this if you want to do it. That's all I can say. Paul Labini, HR Director. What I am saying is that that pay scale reflects a policy that we had in, in place um, that you approved to take effect July 1st. This policy, that pay scale needs to be approved. If you choose, because of previous conversations, to amend the pay, the longevity pay plan, you can do that. That is not this conversation. You approved a policy, you approved a COLA, I took that approval, I've applied it to the pay scale, 
this pay scale needs approval and then if you want to change or amend that longevity policy at a future time it can be at the next meeting it can be six months from now it can be a year from now that is the select board's right to do that but that is not what i am saying at all this evening i am looking for the pay scale that is in front of you to be approved based on decisions and a policy that was in place Thank you for the clarification, okay. and we would need to warn that. And then I also right. want to talk about, yeah, okay, and I also just quickly want to talk about um, giving merit raises or bonuses. Um, I've lived in that world, um, and if that's the direction that say, this. I, I'm sorry, I, I think we should hold that this is not. Okay, uh, I, I, because that is. a whole is, other conversation, but I don't think we should go off on that. That is a sorry. I'm not trying to cut you off. No, but it's a huge. There's a yeah. huge management it's, piece that comes with that. It's going to be a huge conversation, and I'm not, you know, yep, just trying to keep us on topic. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. So, do we have a motion and a second? Do we do that yet? Judy, did we do that yet? We, we, we have a motion and a second. I need a vote. Okay. We had, <laughs> and we we're in the form of discussion. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, moving on to number four. Approve Morristown Police Department sign-on bonus. So this, uh, this isn't something new. We're just go coming up for our yearly renewal. We started doing this two or three years ago. It became the, became the norm in law enforcement of sign-on bonuses for officers that are pre-certified. Uh, we do $7,500, they get 50% at the time of hire and get 50% after they complete their one year probationary period. Uh, some departments are doing 10, $15,000. I don't think, I don't feel we need to go any higher than 7,500. We've lucked out and we've gotten four certified officers by doing this. If we hire a new person, send them to the police academy uh, for four months, you know, on, on step one, no benefits, we're gonna be paying about $21,344. So essentially, this pre-certified officer, yeah, we're going to pay him $7,500, but we're still going to save close to 14000 So uh, I think it's a win-win situation. In the last couple of years, Jason, this has become kind of standard practice for police departments because of the difficulty in getting individuals to fill positions? Correct. Across the board. It's a lot more than, I mean, they're doing hiring, a lot of people are doing hiring bonuses for people that are not certified now. So. Okay. Looking for a motion? I'll make the motion to approve the police department sign on, bo uh, sign on bonus, excuse me. For the amount? Uh, for the amount of seventy five hundred dollars. Seventy five hundred dollars. And it's <coughs> I'm sorry. June thirtieth, twenty twenty four. Until June thirtieth. Uh, I'm sorry. Tell me that one Until more time. Until June thirtieth, twenty twenty four. Okay. Sorry. All right. Let me let me make that clearer. Uh, I would like to make a motion to approve the Morristown Police Department sign on bonus for uh, seven hundred and. Uh, seven thousand five hundred dollars until June thirtieth of two thousand twenty-four. I'll second that. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And the motion is passed. Okay, number five. Discuss funding part of the library appropriation <coughs> now. This was a um, the library had s contacted us, the select board asking that I don't have the, fu the fund amount in front of me but then we normally um, release funds I think about 37,000 a month is it do you want to Whatever call this appropriation is we just divide it by five and pay them in five increments for cash flow purposes That's okay what we normally do. all right so um, they're asking that those appropriations be released from I was hoping someone from the library was going to be here from S July. Steph's on. Oh, Stephanie is on? Mm -hmm. Stephanie, would you like to speak to this? Would you introduce yourself to before? Um, Steph Hoffman, treasurer, Morristown Centennial Library Board of Trustees. Um, in t typical years past, as Tina, I think that was Tina, just described, yes. um, 
We received the appropriation beginning in July with a one-fifth payment in July, and then every month thereafter for five months until the full appropriation has been fulfilled. Our last year's appropriation is 186,000 and change. Sorry, I don't have that pulled up in front of me. Um, and uh, typically we rely on that appropriation for the first three quarters of the fiscal year um, in order to fund library operations. If um, the appropriation is delayed, the library cannot continue to operate pretty much after the 30th of September of this year. Um, if that appropriation is delayed beyond that point with what we are authorized to withdraw for the fiscal year from our endowment, there might be a week or two um, one way or another, depending on our costs during this time. And the vast majority of our budget is payroll. So this would involve laying folks off or closing the library and having folks on furlough, assuming they would come back when we have the funding. So um, we are requesting uh, just a month to month at this point, I think would be fine, but that we receive the first fifth of the appropriation amount while the old budget is sort of functioning in place until a new budget is in place. Um, that's That would be necessary for us to continue operations. And you're asking for those funds to be released this month in July? Yes, that it would, would sure. uh, coordinate with the normal funding schedule um, that the first funds would be released to us sometime this month. And I believe we have, if I'm correct, Judy, on that uh, we, we can consult with Jim Barlow about this. Yes. yes. And um, we are no, under no obligation to fund any money at this time, but, but legally, Jim Barlow said, um, we can fund some money, and I think that's what the library's asking us to do. So I guess my question would be, um, I just ran a quick number if we, because uh, legally I think we can only do it based on last year's 186. Um, so just roughly I threw out 12 months, divided that, it's 1,550. Then there would be back money. So. So can you be more specific about what you're asking for at this, for this month? No, it's 186 to buy the Oh, well, do, Oh, thank you. I'm trying to do this and not. How much was it? It's divided by five. 186 divided by five. So that's about three. Oh, by five. 30, oh, okay. Five payments. Five payments. Like I thought she asked for monthly. But it's but they get it over five months. Can, can I make a suggestion? Oh, I see. Okay, sorry. I misunderstood. I was doing... Before, before we oh. enter into any yeah. discussion, I think that we need a motion on this, a second, and then we would enter into okay. discussion about it okay. uh, in terms of how we move forward with it. Okay. All right. All right. So would someone like to make this motion? Sure. For discussion purposes, I would make a motion to... Um, uh, fund part of the library appropriation now. I'll, make a, I'll second that. Motion and a second. Now we're in a discussion. Uh, we have to vote. No, we're going to oh. discuss. Okay, first. got it. Sorry. Okay. Uh, all right. So um, you can. If, if it's helpful, the exact figure is $37,203.80. And just to be clear, okay. Stephanie, what you're asking for is one fifth of what level funding would be, correct? Yeah. That is correct. It's based on last year's appropriation amount, which was $186,019. So it'd be extending that level funded amount and then dividing it by the five months that typically were provided the appropriation and um and that we would receive that funding within the, the first one fifth within the month of July, if possible. Um, so there's been a lot of discussion about, in, this is my last question, but there's been a lot of discussion about increasing this appropriation, but you, this is not part of your request. It is not in the written letter request that we made, made clear that we would um, have a conversation about a true up if and when the budget passes for 
this current fiscal year, but when that happens. So we're freezing last year's appropriation for the purposes of this request. If I could speak for a moment. Sure. So um, following um, the last select board meeting, um, I had a conversation with both Steph and Julie Pickett about this issue. And um, purely from a fiduciary point of view, um, what we're being asked to do is spend house money without house approval because we don't have a budget. And um, it, I take no pleasure in saying that uh, based on the fact that I fully support the library moving forward, but we don't have a budget and we do not have approval to spend money other than for government <coughs> operations. So I guess I would encourage the board to consider the fact that because the library and the cemetery are both 501c3 corporations that operate their own um, budget, or operate, um, you know, manage their own operations, um, they are not a function of the municipality. Um, that I, I think that um, I would encourage the library to work with their investment group to either borrow against their trust or see if they can change their um, management tools that they have in place to self-fund until we have a budget. But I don't see how this municipality can move forward with the, our fiduciary responsibilities to the taxpayers to spend money that we don't have approval for. Yeah. And I would say, um, given that uh, we consult with Jim Barlow, that we can fund some money. So I'm in favor of funding the well, requested amount of $37,203.80. Should we not do a formal vote? We can, yeah. But I'm okay. just stating, yeah. Did you want to say anything? No. Okay. I guess I, I, I guess I would just say that we don't have a budget. We don't have a budget for anything right now, and we are we're funding we're funding a bunch of things and I guess my maybe this is a question for Tina but if we were to do if we were to fund the library these thirty seven thirty eight thousand dollars are we opening ourselves up for issues elsewhere are there other things that we're not considering right now I, I mean personally I'm 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 in favor of giving the library the money they need it they they're expecting it uh, they're not asking for any more than what is level funded. And I don't think, I mean, none, nobody on this board has suggested that we go below level funding for the library. No. I see two people shaking their head no. Uh, all, th all four of us are not going to go below level funding. So they're going to get level, f they're going to get at least a level funded budget. So we're going to be giving this, this money at least in the future. So, um, I I understand I, under, I understand the the idea of taking out a loan against the trust, but that's going to cost them some money too. That's going to put a burden on them. So I guess I'm I'm kind of in favor of doing this like we are doing elsewhere in our budget. Now I guess I, I will admit cemeteries hasn't come up. We, we haven't talked about cemeteries, but. But we're we're funding all kinds of things right now. We're we've we've got a note from the bank, and the highway department is still putting gas and diesel in their vehicles, and uh, P employees are getting paid. Uh, all our different departments are are getting some money. Um, so I I kind of feel that the library has a burden to pay its bills, and this is something that they. They're, they were counting on. They weren't counting on two budgets failing. Well, I guess the only other, again, um, you know, we have EMS workers that are getting paid $3 an hour and are scheduled to get paid $15 an hour, but we're not doing that because we have an approved budget. Um, I think this is just another example of if we're going to move this community forward, we need to have a past budget to be able to pay our bills. The library is not part of our governmental operations. We don't employ their employees. We don't pay their bills. We give them a stipend. And that is the difference between putting gas in the truck or paying our employees. They are an integral part of our, our function. We have borrowed money to pay these bills uh, at the tune of 3.45%. 
And so um, this is our challenge. Um, I would say that let's get out the vote. Let's get this budget passed. They'll get approval for um, funding and we will um, move on from that. But I still stand firm that we we're spending house money and we don't have house approval for it other than governmental operations. So. Tina. Tina Sweet, finance director. Um, I just want to point out that Don is indeed right. We do also fund the Pleasant View Cemeteries appropriation and we give them their money in July, which I'm sure they would like to have too. Um, there's other places like the military band that's in our regular general government budget, but it's kind of like a stipend. Then there's MAC. All of those get funded in July, too. So when you're making your decision, I just want you to be aware that the library is not the only one that gets funding in July. Tony? Can I ask one? Go ahead. Stephanie, can I ask you to just reiterate the consequence of not getting the July payment? Uh, yes. So we have calculated that if we are to stay within the confines of our both fiduciary and policy based obligations, we will run out of funding by September 30th, give or take a week one way or another. So the library will close completely at that point because we do not have currently on an alternative plan or an option for funding on um, the library beyond that point. I would also just like to state, if I may, um, I think the, the characterization of the library as a 501c3 nonprofit makes it seem like there's some kind of thing as a private library issue here. We are not a private library. We're a public library, free public library that serves the town of Morristown. And in statute, it is the town's obligation to provide access and the state's obligation to provide access to all of its citizens to a public library, a free public library. We don't receive a stipend. We receive an, a voter approved appropriation. And just as every other department in last year's budget received a uh, voter approved authorization to spend, the library received $186,019. And it seems like for our purposes, the delay is reliant on the fact that our library does happen to have an endowment, which is fully managed by law by the Board of Trustees. And placing an undue burden on that endowment, whether in the form of asking us to withdraw extra money from it, which violates our fiduciary obligation or borrow against it, is actually outside of the authority by law of the select board to require. So by not funding us with our appropriation, there is a consequence for us in terms of whether or not we're indirectly being having the endowment managed by the select board's decision. And that's why we also may very well have to close at the end of September because we don't have the ability to utilize any other means of spending the endowment's money without violating our fiduciary responsibility to manage that fund appropriately. Thank you. Tony? Yeah, Tony Cody, Cody Hill. I'm supposed to be home tonight, but I couldn't stand it. I, I won hundred dollars because I said. I'll give you hundred dollars right now. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm going to put it toward my campaign. <laughs> actually, I actually agree with you, Chris. But there's one thing we need to do. We need to put a closed sign on that library and let the taxpayers make, the, make their mind up. When they when run out of money, put a closed sign on it and let the taxpayers say, well, the library is closed now. And maybe, maybe more people would vote. Right now, we're going to fight here August 29th. We're going to be lucky to have 1,200 people vote. And if, and if this budget passes, it's going to pass probably 639 to 600. And you guys are going to be proud of that. We've already we've already had two budgets, two to one. That's only because nobody's going to show up. Put a close sign on the library. Let's see what that does. What you're laughing, Judy? Why? I'm, I'm not laughing. Why you're? I'm smiling because. Okay. Is it a good idea or is it not? It's an interesting idea. 
Okay. Yeah. That's what I want. It's not something I'd want to do. But that's what I want to hear. Idea. When I say something here, I want to say, "Hey, that's a good idea," or "No, sit down." That's not. That's not. That's not. That's not hard to do, right? You're the one that's in charge here. No, I I facilitate the meeting, so that's my job here. But I don't have to get into a back and forth with people. No, you don't. Take the hundred dollars back. Tina, oh. Oh. Yeah, oh. Where do you want to go? Oh, right. oh. Wait, shh. Wait, hold on, hold on. Tom, just talk. Tony? He's okay. Don't well, talk to me. I'm here now. I'm just hold Tom clued in. Uh, and I'm talking to you. And, and so far, this meeting, we're talking about, the, we haven't really got into the budget, but people out there listening, and so far, what we have done is increased the budget. Yeah. We haven't made any cuts. For the first time in a long time, Chris, you and I agree with something. And, and I appreciate that. I love that library as much as anybody in this town. We don't even have a budget and they want us to pay now. If that's the case, you want to give them their $35,000? Well, I'll tell you what. Why not? Let's pay these EMM right now. They're $15 an hour. Let's do that. We get a lot more money, a buck, a punch for our money by giving it to those, to those guys that are out there saving lives every every day, than this library. You've got to look at that, Don. I mean, you've got to, you cannot be paid giving money away. We don't have a budget. People are sitting home saying, "What are they doing?" We 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 try to get the budget down, and they're giving money. Nobody's going to argue about the, the, the money for the police department. They're going to have a hard time with this. They're going to have a real hard time with this. Perception is a lot on this next damn budget vote. And right now you guys are losing it. And by giving them more money isn't helping your cause one bit. I want us to get along together too. We talked about it. we want to get along, but this isn't really the way to go about it. If you're really serious about, that's all. Tina, can I ask a question um, for um, time flow? If the, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, the budget is planned to be August 29th. So at that point, what's the turnaround to start making payments on things? 30 day appeal in 30 day yeah yeah well it's a 30 day appeal process mm -hmm. so after that 30 days is over with then we would issue a check so no money goes out until 30 days after the vote not not for um, not for anything new like an appropriation or anything just to keep whatever we've got to do like fuel in the, the governmental trucks. stuff right just, just to keep explain. those things that we have by union contracts and whatnot so nothing would be done for 30 days in case there's an appeal. Mm -hmm. So you have to wait before you can do anything. Okay, thank you. Uh, you want to Paris, uh, Mooresville, Vermont? Um, I, I like the library as much as the next person, but the fact of the matter is I agree with Chris wholeheartedly. And I, I, I had a, a talk with Bill over there about his folks and if we're going to give anybody money before the budget, we need to give his men and women money first. Like, like Tom said, they're the ones that are out there on the street saving people's lives or, or having people die on them because, you know, it's just not right. The other thing that, that I haven't heard the library, the lady has talked numerous times about what they do. I haven't heard her talk about how in the world of shrinking budgets, how she can shrink her budget to make her dollar go further. Now I understand there's, you know, it's for the kids and there's a lot of kids there after school and all that, but you know what? If it's gonna be a babysitting service, well then maybe the library should charge people who have kids that bring them to the library. Maybe, and we had this talk at the gravel pit with uh, Chris a little bit, you know, these other communities that use our library you know, I mean, I don't know what the numbers are, but we need to look into, the library has overspent their endowment where now their hand is always out. And that's not a primary thing for the town of Mooresville to pay. Um, the other thing that I would like to say is that 
uh, talking with Kevin, you know, everybody thinks that the gravel pit's going to be open and the 25,000 yards of gravel, you know, 15,000 gra uh, gravel, 10 sand, everybody looks at those numbers and think, oh man, that's huge. But that is not huge. I mean, if you're going to do your own personal driveway of 1,000 feet, well, then that's huge. But when you're talking about 70 roads in Mooresville, a lot of them are washed out. There's going to be need to be gravel replacement. I mean, if you do the if you do the calculations, like with Kevin, you know he's going to tell you you know like an inch or two of gravel doesn't go very far, and some of these roads need five or six inches of gravel. You dump a truck, and it looks like you didn't dump anything. Where did it all go? It maybe went ten feet. And so you know the back back to the library. I think they need the weight. And like somebody has just said, if they can't if they can't run and they're out of money, then they do what a lot of other people do. If you can't afford steak, I guess we buy hamburger t this week. So I just wanted to clarify that the the money they're asking for is not an an additional. It's the amount of money that would have been um, appropriated, given, distributed to them. It it. It's money that we have available that we can. The money, the $15 we'd like to give to the EMS, that was in the new budget. And it's, it's a, I'm not an expert in this, but it, there's the difference. It's, it's, we're still talking about the old budget with the, I don't want to say appropriations for the library. It's not anything additional. It's not, any, not anything new. And the library also provides services to all ages, not just to kids. Well, I and, understand that, but yeah. still. You know, I think, most, on, come up to the, I think most of the folks here in this room could live without the library for a week or a month. Well, we may lose, unfortunately, we may lose our um, employees, which it, it, it's, a, it's a cascading effect when you don't have funding. And I understand that, but that's America. It happens. Uh, I'd say it at the microphone. So I'm Pat Michelson. So last you. week I heard a lot of discussion about the budget. And we can't afford $45 a piece for this. And so I wrote on front porch form that I challenged people to look at what was handed out last week to what your house was appraised at with the new rate and at the table at the bottom what it would be. Comes out exactly what it said. So my house went from 129 to two, I think it was 219. At 300, I did the computer with the town clerk's office and it came out to 300. So people who are arguing against this, I would like to suggest go do the calculator. Prove it to yourself. Those numbers that were handed out by the town don't lie. That's all I'm gonna say. Thanks, Pat. Um, uh, I think it's Kathy. Could you introduce yourself, please? Um, yes, I was wondering if you were going to have, uh, I just, I have something I want to discuss with you, but it's in the um, comments or concerns. Are we having them tonight? Because one yeah. night I wanted to. Okay, so I'll just wait till there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other? Jamie Jarrett, uh, I totally agree with what Chris came up with. Uh, it's certainly a viable uh, explanation. What Aaron, as we've discussed and heard for weeks and months, unprecedented times. And businesses need to look for ways to create revenue for themselves. And whether it's in this case, the library, they need to look at doing some fundraising to offset what they're asking the taxpayers to pay. I don't think anybody here, and I'm certain nobody here, is against the library at all. It's just the business decision that has to be made, and the right decision needs to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? I just want to follow up. Um, my position on this is, is strictly business for the town. That's what I am. I'm not elected. I am appointed to this chair to look out for. 
And I absolutely empathize with where staff and the library staff is at. Um, this is not a referendum against them. It's not, um, you know, any judgment. Um, I think that um, this board has a responsibility to the taxpayers in terms of managing money. I think we're putting forth a responsible budget, um, and it includes uh, the funding for the library. But again, we don't have house approval for this. And I think it sets a bad precedent if we go color outside the lines here for this board and any other boards that come here. Um, our attorney did say that we certainly could make a good faith payment um, if these were ordinary times, but these are not ordinary times. Um, both with the temperament of the public as well as um, the fact that we're on our third iteration, iteration of our budget. Um, and with no guarantees that this will pass, I am very hopeful that it will, that we will get the support so that fire, police, EMS, you know, we can all highway, we can all move on in a reasonable way so that we can get down to the business of planning for fiscal year 24-25. But um, I think that we need to get out the vote and then this problem will get solved and we won't have to have this conversation again. Judy, there is somebody on Zoom. Okay. Um, someone with a rainbow? I think it's Carrie. Could you introduce yourself, please? Hi. I'm Kendra Aberferry. I'm the library director. I just wanted to say that if you, the library is not a business. The library supports the community and helps the most vulnerable people in Morrisville. There's people in town who have no place to go when it's hot outside. There's people in town who have no place to, to go to the bathroom and they come to the library. The library supports the entire community. There's also six employees at the library who work tirelessly to support people, not making the same pay that the people who work for the town do. And it would really break my heart to not pay our employees and to not, and for the people in Morrisville, the most vulnerable people in Morrisville to not have a place to go. Thank, Thank you. you. Jan Paris, um, how much money does the library have in cash right now? I mean, they get 300000 a year or something is their budget, whatever that is. You mean, is this like I can't buy groceries Friday night right now because I have to get paid on Friday? I mean, I can't understand how if this is run similar to a business from what I'm understanding, that they don't have any money to do things with I mean are they flat broke and they're waiting for a check from us um, I don't know if anyone Stephanie can you respond so I think that the characterizations of the library are drastically mismatched with the reality the law and facts um, the library is a free public library authorized by Vermont statute we run as a 501c3 nonprofit, so therefore we are not a for-profit business. Um, and we make our funding each year on a combination of three factors. One, the town's appropriation. Two, a portion of our endowment that is considered income on the money that is held there in trust. And three, fundraising. Our budget has benefited from the private fundraising that we do as a board. Uh, significantly benefiting Morristown taxpayers and from this income from the endowment. We have not overspent the endowment. We have not overtaxed the endowment, but we have a fiduciary obligation to maintain the endowment. And in fact, we have spent more of the endowment year after year for decades than many other public libraries in Vermont that have the benefit of an endowment, which can often be dedicated to a single line item on the budget each year without the opportunity to expend a dollar more for that line item on the budget. Ours, we've created a flexible plan that provides Morristown residents with approximately 30 to 40% discount year after year. If the town taxpayers were paying 100% of the library's budget each year, they would be experiencing far greater impact on their tax bills. We are not running at a deficit or have improperly mismanaged our money, we rely on the appropriation to fund 60 to 70% of our budget each year as we have for over 30 years. 
So that split is part of how we budget and plan each year's um, expenses and payroll. Payroll makes up almost two thirds of our budget. We have a very lean level funded budget otherwise, except for the four categories I've explained at numerous meetings, which are out of our control, much like they're out of everyone else's control, utility rising expenses, postage rising expenses, and, um, and some other sort of rising expenses of payroll of, for example, our janitorial services. Without those rises, the rest of our budget would be level funded. Um, and we do not increase our funding in areas where grants are obtainable. We haven't for at least five years. Um, in that regard, this amount of money is for, but for budgeting purposes necessary for us to continue operating. We cannot play with the endowment as a slush fund and forcing our hand in this regard could lead to the consequence that our employees do become town employees. We are operated as a town unit, which is distinct from a town department, but we participate in all the financial reporting and auditing as a town unit um, each fiscal year. And we have to produce all of our financial documentation to demonstrate our appropriate operations of our finances. If we were to become a municipal library, which is the only distinction in Vermont libraries, then all of our employees would become town employees in an just this fiscal year, that would represent over a $75,000 increase just on the healthcare costs alone, let alone the other benefits and the salary implications of that. So just by operating as a 501c3 public library, we save Morristown residents a substantial amount of money each year in, by, by keeping this distinction. And it feels quite, quite honestly like we're being a tax because we're a 501c3 operating a free public library instead of a municipality operating a free public library. But I want the taxpayers to understand there are three levels of savings as a result of that. Flexibility with the endowment and use of the endowment by the same managers that manage the finances of the library, the employee arrangement, and the fundraising component. So I would just say that's, that's how our funding is constructed our reliance on that appropriation, in my observation, is identical to any other town department that's continuing to operate right now and relying on last year's budget to keep going. And so our argument is that we should be treated the same as those other departments in how we can continue to operate. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I she didn't answer the question. So restate your question again. You want to, like know, how to know how much money is in their checking account? How much money can they afford to pay their employees and for how long? So in other words, do they have $30,000 in cash that, they're, that they can spend without taking it from the endowment? I believe they said September 30th they would run out of money. September 30th. Is that okay. not correct? And I, I'm just going to ask um for everyone's sake that we do honor the two minutes is somebody keeping track of that yeah we've got a lot of yeah, that, that, stuff to go on so just please everybody stick to the two minutes um does somebody want to answer the is it september 30th that is correct yeah. thank you henry on um zoom so um just putting my devil's advocate. Could you, tell, could you on, introduce yourself, please? Yes, Henry Hamill. Thank you. I'm um, sorry. Uh, just putting my devil's advocate hat on. What what happens here if come the end of the budget vote, you find out that for whatever reason the budget doesn't pass, and now you guys have got to really look hard at what items you're going to suck out of that budget to get down to something that the voters will will vote on. So, you know, you ask yourself and answer the question for yourselves. What will you do in the event of the budget not passing? The library will probably be one of the items that comes up for discussion. And I'm not looking at throwing darts at the library. I'm not looking at making them look bad. I'm not questioning whether or not they deserve funding, whether it even be just level funding. That's not the discussion. The discussion is what happens if the budget doesn't pass? Can you afford to put money out front knowing that you have no way to back that money up if the budget doesn't pass? I don't have an answer for you. 
Does anybody have an answer? I don't think I'm looking for an answer. I think okay. I'm looking for you to uh, ask yourself what happens if. I guess I, for one, wasn't expecting this to be the most difficult vote for me for the night. I've gone back and forth a bunch of times on this. I've uh, made my support for the library pretty clear to people for several meetings. But I think I, I think I know what I need to do now. There's been very compelling arguments made on both sides. Okay. I'm going to, yeah, Christy, go ahead. Christy Snip, um, if you're considering not funding the library, could you speak to what other um, parts of the budget will not be able to be funded until the budget is passed? Yeah. Yeah, you, you could speak to some of this. Um, the, um, you know, there's specific proposals to raise EMS uh, pay from $3 an hour to $15 an hour. We would love to do that. Um, but we cannot because we don't have a budget. Um, the the uh, Pleasant View Cemetery uh, gets money from the municipality. They are an independent en entity operating on town land. Um, I think the same thing applies. We're spending house money without house approval. Um, there are other appropriations. I think the, you had mentioned the town band um, and some other entities. Um, this is. This is not meant in any way to be punitive other than the fact that by default it is. Um, but we do not have, we are borrowing money right now to pay government expenses at the tune of, I, correct me if I'm wrong, about three, uh, almost three and a half percent. Is that correct, Dina? So um, it's a business decision from the municipal side of the ledger. I, I fully concur with what St Steph is saying to us tonight, um, and I am completely empathetic to the position they're in, and I'm hoping that somehow they will be able to work um, with their endowment and um, their investment policy to maintain because, to, to um, I think, uh, Henry's point, if for some reason this budget doesn't pass, we are back to the drawing board and we're expending taxpayers' money for um, unprecedented things um, such as the library and the cemetery. I mean, we're writing checks that we really don't have voter approval for. And I, I just don't see the wisdom or the precedent set in doing that. I don't think that we're meeting our fiduciary responsibility to the government operations that we're responsible for every day. Did I answer your question, sort of? Uh, Tina could probably go into more depth. Tina, you want to step up? Tina Sweet, Finance Director. It's my understanding that the only thing that we're spending money on are necessity type items. Things you have to get to repair your trucks, uh, fuel, lights. Uh, we're not getting anything new or anything that's unusual, just exactly what we need to operate because we don't have a past budget. I think her question was what other, other things are we um, able to pay for? Mac. It gets uh, $7,500, I think, usually in the summer. The military band gets $1,500. Uh, Pleasant View Cemetery is uh, trying to get $26,000. Um, those are the only things that come to mind directly. Um, the other uh, service agencies that were voted in favor of won't get paid until October, and that's the normal time they would get paid anyway because that is when tax money starts coming in, so it's a tax flow thing. But they will all get paid in you know, the end of October, beginning of November as normal. Does that answer? Yes. So, Thank Tina, what, we've, several people have talked about EMS. Mm -hmm. This budget that hasn't passed yet uh, does impact the way that we pay fire as well? Yes. Fire, the fire will continue to get the stipends that they normally have and will at some point have to true up with that. Um, and EMS volunteers will get $3 an hour like they always have because the $15 an hour has not been approved. And that will get trued up as well. It'll get trued up as well, yes. 
and fire would go from their stipends to, to an fifteen dollars an, an hour or or whatever. They have different hourly rates for different levels. So a similar sort of thing is happening with fire that's happening with EMS. That's true. Thank you. There was someone with their hand up, Carl. But it's Hi, it's Carrie oh, Varner. Oh, sorry. Okay. That's okay. Sorry. Hi, my name is Carrie Varner. I'm a, a resident of the Morseville Village. And also, as you probably know, I work at the library as a library assistant for a number of years. And I just wanted to speak in favor of my children who are standing right next to me, who are saying we can't believe that we would have to close the library. It is such a vital resource in our community. We have people that do not have time to attend meetings, do not have time to go to every meeting and write on front porch forum from young children, babies to the elderly that we serve in so many different ways and to cut people off at a time in their lives when our community is reeling around us from the floods is just, it's too horrific to imagine, honestly. We have so many children that come down from the school every day who come to read, to access computers, who get free tutoring, who get STEM education, who get access to literacy, who get arts and crafts and all the kinds of things that everyone has spoken so eloquently about previously that we needed our community to fight crime, drug use, all the things that and build the community together. And I just, it, it's really disheartening to hear the kind of conversation that's happening right now. And it's disappointing. Um, we've been working really, really, really hard since the pandemic to build the library into a welcoming space for everyone. And I think we've done that. And for our town to turn our backs on us at a time like this is just, it's heart wrenching. I honestly, it's mind boggling. And I'm, I, I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you. Any other discussion? So the solution to this is a positive vote on August 29th, and it survives any kind of appeal, and that solves our problem. And, and that is the solution that we need to move forward with. We need to get out the vote. We need to pass this budget so that all departments, including um, the library's um, money, um, gets appropriated, and we can move, move on as a community. So we have a, a motion on the floor. Judy, could you read that? Uh, yeah, and a motion on the floor to partially fund the library. Partially fund the library funds now in the amount of $37,203.80. Okay. All right, and we have a second. We have a second. We have a second. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? No. Nay. Nay. So the, the motion fails. <clears throat> Okay, discuss and approve the funding part of the health reimbursement account. The health reimbursement account is an account that's set up just for the deduction portion of employees that take our health insurance. We have a health insurance plan that's a very high deductible plan that we chose because it saved taxpayers a lot of money, but in turn we established a fund that is town owned that we put money in every year that the um, insurance company will take out of for the person to uh, help them reach their deductible amount. Um, right now it's getting pretty low because it usually is funded right around now and I would like permission to take $50,000 to put in of the funding. That's not all the funding. The funding is over is 1,400 or 1,444,000 in in its entirety. But I would like permission to take 50,000 of that um, and put in the funds so that we won't run out of money for our employees' health insurance reimbursements. Could you restate the number again? You said. The total number. The, the total. The total amount of in the budget is one hundred and forty-four thousand dollars. But yeah, I'm only asking for fifty right now because I don't want to put undue burden. So Tina, I know that you and I have spoken about this. Um, I think for the benefit of those uh, sitting with us um, tonight, 
Um, this is a contractual agreement. This is part of our uh, union contracts and our non-union agreements. Is that correct? That yes, this, it's that part of money, the health care package that we right. have. So it's simply transferring money into that account to meet our responsibilities that right. we're under contract for. Yes, and the account is in the town's name and remains the town's money. So it's not like it, we're paying somebody else. It just sits in there until it is utilized by people going to the doctors and whatnot. So I'm supposed to address you, but I just yeah. have a clarifying Did, question. Well, go ahead. Do that and just okay. tell us who you are. Allison Tool, Marcel. So when you're asking for the the 50000 whatever, where does the money come from? Is it coming from loans that we're taking out? So it would be coming from a loan. Okay. Just didn't know where the money was coming from. Yeah, um, it's coming, it is coming from the loan that we always take on July 1st, the way it normally would. So we would we would be taking we've already every year we do take money out because the taxes don't come in until like October November so this is a usual operating budget process. Thank you. So we need a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve funding of the health reimbursement account for fifty thousand dollars. I would second that motion. Motion and a second. Discussion. I have a question. The um, reserve fund that is. Um, such a popular topic. Um, can can that be used for things like this? I'm not sure who can answer this Un, question. An allocated reserve fund. An allocated re reserve fund, and that we keep re referring to it as emergency fund, but that's not the proper title. By the statute, you can yeah. only use that money for emergency type purposes. If we were to run out of funding, then that could be a potential thing you could use it for, but this wouldn't qualify in that case. If the budget didn't pass, would it then be, um, would that qualify? Just asking questions here, don't panic. Um, would that then be considered an emergency situation? I'm not sure. I've never encountered this type of thing before, so I would have to double check to see if it fell within the statute. Somebody was asking, so. I'm yeah, sorry. no, I, okay. good question. I don't know. I'm sorry. Any other discussion? No. Okay, hand up. Uh, someone with a rainbow. Could you um, introduce yourself, please? <laughs> Hi, Kendra Aberferry. I just have a quick question. I was wondering if the town employees got their, um, the non-union town employees got the raises that were, um, that they had been requesting. That yes. haven't I, think, I think we need to stay on top of here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That haven't passed yet? I'm just curious. It, what we can do, um, I'll, I'll, I'm sorry. I, this is not an agenda item, but I'll say yes. And that was a discussion that happened uh, a month or so ago. I can clear that up, clear that up later for you. Oh, I'd, lo I'd love to talk more about it. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, so we have a, a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next is old business. Appoint members to Lamoille County Planning Commission Board of Directors. Wait, did we skip one? You oh, it was deleted. Number seven Sorry. got deleted. Number seven, Number seven was, was deleted. deleted. Yeah. So, um... The, uh, I have served on that, in that capacity as a, um, a member, not necessarily of the select board, but just of the community on the board of directors. I'd be happy to serve again if you'd like me to. It is, uh, there's no power in that. I don't get paid. Um, it basically is representation of the town on the planning council. Planning council. And we need another person to also serve. So have have we, we put out, oh, excuse me, Judy, are you done? Yeah, I'm sorry. Have we put out any notices? Yeah, um, I was just going to say that. It was in the so we put it out, and the only name we have is Judy's for that. Yeah. For that was story. it on front page form, I think I saw it? Okay. And is that the normal? Yeah, because to have two spots open is, yeah. Okay. I thought I, thought I saw it. Just Last year, we only had one. I don't know if you've ever had anybody else. Yeah, we've had two. We did. <coughs> we had, uh, he, moved, he moved out of town. I've had, uh, there's been... <laughs> two people serving, another person serving with me off and on. Um, and uh, Stephen Foster was on and he moved to Stowe so he can no longer serve. <clears throat> so, so, 
Tell us who you are. I'm just curious. Oh, I'm Dan McLaughlin, citizen of Morrisville. Um, just wondering how you get on the board or how you apply for the... Submit your name to Judy, and then it's voted on by the select board. Oh, okay. I'll submit my name, Judy. Okay. I mean, if that's what you're going to vote on next. Um, um, can I don't... we take... Um, can we I, I thought take that I had tonight, a... or... I can't. Oh. What I'll do is talk with you this week. Okay. There's sure. There's information across the street that the Long Island Planning County Commission in place. Cool. And uh, we'll talk about it. I can always put it back on the agenda for another name. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'd like to entertain a motion. Um, can you just speak to how many hours it takes? How much time it the it's commitment? A, and it's a once a month uh, meeting just for the board, and then you uh, elect to serve on a, uh, an auxiliary board. Uh, I'm on the PPR Planning and Project Review Committee. Stephen was on the Browns field, so there's different committees nominating. There's different committees you can serve on, so they take other times during your your, uh, your meeting time. So it's usually once a month a meeting with the PPNR and the Lamoille County Planning Commission, um, and there's uh, sometimes project reports to read, minutes to read. So I'd say four hours a month, approximately. I just have had concerns, more than that, maybe more um, than that. and I'll be honest about it, about time commitment. I mean, we're here with no budget, um, and you do you have a lot of hats. Um, so I've, I have concerns as to dividing time. I think I can manage my time. Thank you. Um, it's, if someone else wants to step up, I don't have a problem with that. We had, when I came onto the select board, we had no representation on the mm -hmm. Moyo County Planning Commission. It was an advocacy that I promoted so that we got somebody from our community on the board. And, um, and it's just basically having a person at the table. So if someone else wants to step up. Yeah, I'll make a I'd motion that we that. appoint Judy Bickford to be Morristown's representative to the Moyo County Planning Commission Board of Directors. I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion, a second. Any discussion? Go ahead. Um, I just have a question. Maybe other people. Oh, Evelyn Throne, Morrisville. <laughs> you know who I am. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just for you know other people's edification and maybe so that they would be inspired to be involved. Um, what advantages to the town does it does it have to have someone on the board and what particular or what e examples of things that could be helped by serving on this board it, it, you're, you have a seat at the table so that whatever uh, we have a, a really solid um, system in our town we have a, a, a planner we have a town administrator um, we have a full uh, array of people who work for the town so we're not as in need this is my personal opinion not as a need as um, other communities are who don't have all of those people that they employ. But I know that um, our board, when I first got on, was, was we didn't have a seat at the table. And, um, and we did then join, we didn't, we, uh, we weren't members, we did rejoin. And then Eric, I know, used them a lot. He, he was using them more than, than I was. I'm just a representative, I bring back information. I find out if there's anything that's going to be valuable to us. I would give that information to Eric, and um, that's primarily what I was doing. And it's, I don't know how else to say it, but it's just having representation from the town there. And it can be anybody. It doesn't have to be someone from the board. Uh, in the past, it was Todd and Tricia who were, who were there. Could you speak to the mission of the Lido and Warren County Planning Commission exists? I think that might be what she might be looking for. Wow. I mean, what, what kinds of activities do they monitor that allows us to be a party to? Well, that, a lot of things that are happening are not in our town necessarily. But, for example, uh, they're involved in the engineering going on at Smuggler's Notch to reconfigure that area for parking. Uh, we've brought to the table would be a... Uh, a cell tower, maybe in Eden. I know there was one, I can't remember what community it was in. But different activities going on in different communities. It comes to the, the uh, 
the LCPC, and then we are saying, does it fit the regional plan that's presented in front of us, and we can prove it that way. The LCPC also is in charge of, we have a town plan, and that uh, uh, it went before, our town plan went before the LCPC to get approval. We did not get our approval yet from them, but once we do, we have a downtown designation and grants and funding comes through that. So it's advantageous to have representation there. I hope, does that help at all? And they, they do have a lot, of, they have planners, um, uh, there's people right across the street, there's a lot of people available have expertise in areas that can help with our, with our town processes. And I know Eric consulted with them frequently. Different grants, I know um, Judy was looking at, uh, one came in about looking at our buildings. Um, was it energy, energy efficiency? Energy ground. Right. Uh, right. So some information would come to me that I would just pass along mm -hmm. to, to Eric and he would distribute the information where it needed to go. I'm not 100% sure, but I think our maps might come from, oh, yeah. from being members over there. So. There are probably a lot more advantages than I'm telling you. So I think we have a motion and we have a second, correct? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passed. Appoint Lamoille County Transportation Advisory Committee representative. So we have two people that are interested in serving on this committee. The first one is Gerald Throne, and the second one is Martin Green. Okay, I see. Would you like to come up and introduce yourself to us? Even though we do know who you are, but that would be good. And tell us why you'd like to serve. I'm Jerry Throne, Gerald Throne, and uh, I live here in Morrisville. Um, I'm retired. I have a background in uh, civil engineering and uh, transportation and uh, highway engineering. Uh, I have many years of experience in that field as well as construction. So I think uh, I am qualified uh, to uh, hold that position. Uh, I would like to be able to uh, represent the town and uh, be able to bring back whatever information uh, that I think would be advantageous for the town to know and uh, so that uh, we can have a voice uh, at the uh, TAC. Great, thank you. Thank you. And I know Martin is not here. Uh, is he on, on Zoom? He's not, he's not here, but I did speak. Martin and I have been communicating all weekend, and um, he was here at the meeting when we first put this on the table, and I asked some questions of me, and I answered them. I told him he could find more information across the street, um, but he's very interested as his wife is here in support of it as well. Great, thank you. I know that um, a couple of years ago, this position was open and I uh, was brought to the board. I think Dan Lindley was the town administrator at the time and asked, they had the opening on tax, so I found somebody who was interested in serving on that board. It was a young woman and I, uh, I found out later on, it's probably somebody who, need, who has some qualifications like you do, interest in transportation. And, but uh, she served for several years, and it was nice to have representation from our town on that board. So uh, do you have just, do we have any information about what uh, Martin Green's background is? Does, does anybody can speak to it? I mean, I don't, just curious. I personally don't. Uh, yeah. Would you like to? Well, his wife would love to. <laughs> Thank you. Just, if I, I think everybody would be interested to know. Sure. And tell us who you are first. Thanks. Laura Green, Martin's wife. <laughs> I'm Morrisville. Um, I, I didn't even know till tonight. I knew that he was considering <laughs> it, <laughs> but he loves surprises, so he hadn't told me <laughs> that he was going to be appointed um, until I, I just found that out tonight. Um, and we've been communicating a little by text tonight, but he is on a job right now. Um, he basically, you know, we've been sitting in these meetings for a year or more. And he, when he heard about this this opportunity, he just felt like he just wanted to step into something um, and and be able to serve the town in some capacity. <clears throat> Excuse me. And and I I can't speak to any. There aren't any particular qualifications, um, experience-wise, in this field that 
that he has other than a desire to learn, a desire to serve, and a desire to, to be an active part of the community. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So uh, I would like to entertain a motion. So we have two people. Do you have their names? I'll make a motion that we appoint Jerry Frome. And I was going to say Geraldine. No, that's right. <laughs> I'm sorry. That we appoint Jerry Throne and Martin Green to the uh, Lamar County Transportation Advisory Committee to represent the town of Morristown. Just out of uh, looking at the form here, um, there seems to be a one year, two years, and three years. We've got one year, one year. Oh. I do on my form. One year. I've spoken with both of them. Okay. And then we that also a term of one year. For a one year term. We also <laughs> and have Judy sign as the chair. And we have, have to okay. Judy sign as the chair. Thank you. All right. All right. All those motions. <laughs> we have a motion, a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion passed. Number three, budget discussion slash finalization. And who would like to start? <coughs> We've had a lot of discussions about the budget past several weeks. Would you like to start, Chris? You have that look on your face. Go ahead. I'll ju I just have a very quick comment, and that is since our we got together last time, the budget last time we spoke was at 9.9%, not counting the grand list, and it's my understanding that it has further dropped to 9.7%. So we're at the budget that we are considering right now is a 9.7% increase over last year. And I'll remind folks that that does not include the increase in the grand list, which brings it down another 2%, approximately, maybe more, we'll just say 2% right now leaving us at about 7.7%. And as I said last week, that is below the cost of living that we have been dealing with in the last little bit. So to put that into a slightly different perspective, as I did last week, it arguably could be said that we are deficit spending right now. We are not keeping up with inflation. Can I, um, Tina, can I ask what is, what? What is the percentage um, of the actual budget that's been increased expense-wise before we pay down $340,000 of the reserve fund? So just, a point of clear, just a point of clarification. Uh, we are proposing to take $240,000 of the unallocated funds. And the other uh, 100,000 of that is um, the fund balance coming to projected fund balance coming out of the highway to equal 340. So it's 240 from the unallocated um, expended uh, expense funds as well as $100,000 coming from highway fund balance to equal the 340. And, and it was added because it's coming from the fund, the highway fund balance. As it opposed is, to yeah, regular, it's just an aggregate number, but it's two pieces. Uh, okay, so it's not in the general funding that hundred thousand dollars from the highway. Is that correct? It is a fund balance from this prior year that we're carrying forward. It's tax dollars that we've already spent, they already paid to be applied to reduce the tax dollars that we're going to be paying. So I guess my question still holds. What is the um, what would is the percentage of the increase in the budget without and perhaps it's without the 240? Well, I'd have to do some calculations on that. I wasn't prepared to ask, um, answer that specifically. So, um, Tina, when, you, when you're ready, would you hook the microphone? And my concern is because the minute we drop, stop this budget, we start the next. And this, that's the number we technically will be starting with. So the 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 240 is coming from fund balance, not a reserve account. Okay, it's the leftover fund balance right. after we fund the what they call emergency count right. account, and the hundred thousand dollars is what we anticipate the end of this past year will end up with an extra hundred thousand dollars that was not spent, and or we ended up getting more revenue than we did expenditures. So that's where that's coming from. 
if you're talking about um, last time's budget for general government was 28.3%. This time it's 16.8. That includes the 100,000. But the 240 was already in the 28.3% figure from the last time we it got voted down. So it's it's dropped to 16.8, which is more than um, more than just the 100,000. There were also a bunch of other corrections and and stuff that was done to decrease that. Um, highway went from 20.3% to 19.4. Fire stayed at a negative 5.4. EMS went from a negative 3.2 to a negative 3.7. Highway went from 28.1 to 22.6. So our overall uh, budget for operations went from a 16.1% increase to a 11.3% increase. And here's a really nickel and dime question. Um, now that unfortunately that we uh, do not have the Oxbow in use, I was running through um, the budget and there was like a um, $4,000 mowing mm -hmm. uh, and some odd things. How How is that going to affect us? Because you know, unfortunately, we can't mow. And there were a couple other things. Right. Well, if we can't mow, we don't pay it. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but yeah, anything, anything that would have gone on in the Oxbow that we would have paid for will not be paid for until, and consequently, any of the revenue that we anticipated getting from renting out the Oxbow yeah. will not be received until the Oxbow is so, clear. Would it be um, normal to adjust the budget out or no, because we don't know when Oxbow is coming back up? Well, we don't know when it's coming back up for sure. And $4,000 adjustment isn't I going know. to make any real difference in the bottom line that people are voting on. So I would probably advise against it. Yeah, it just, it just came up as I was looking no, through it's, stuff. No, it's a good question. Because it's a terrible thing to have to even think about. But Judy, um, <clears throat> the other thing I just want to mention um, and Don touched on it. Um, we're talking about growth in the grand list, and some may say, well, we just did a reappraisal. Um, these are now current valuations of our properties, uh, both commercial and residential. How is it that we're looking at growth in the grand list if we now have a current grand list? So I asked that question today um, of our town assessor um, so that I would be prepared to talk about it a little bit tonight. The growth in the grand list is typically uh, based on uh, zoning permits that are submitted and approved for growth in the community, both commercial and residential. And that's how they monitor the growth uh, in the grand list. So even though we have a current grand list that's been approved, um, to date, um, and talking with our town assessor, I think there's been 66 permits uh, Thomas may very well correct me on this, 66 permits that have been approved across the board. Um, last year, I think there was 166 permits. We've seen a drop in the amount of permits applied for, and I think a lot of that's contributed to the fact that interest rates are, are ex, uh, extraordinary right now. Um, so it's put a curb on development, both residential and commercial. But that's, there is still growth going on in our community because of permitting and construction, and that'll all be factored into the bottom line. So in Don's assessment, um, that it could very well uh, reduce um, the overall uh, cost of this budget from 9.7% uh, to something lower than that, I think is very realistic. Um, and I think as we assess this budget and we assess what we're actually going to end up paying our taxes on, um, we need to focus on the net number, not uh, the gross number. And the gross number right now is 9.7%, but the net number is going to be less than that just because our, our community continues to grow uh, in terms of its value. So I just wanted to share that piece. In case the question ever came up. Reintroduce yourself. Jan Paris, how much money was allocated for 4th of July for 24? Was that like 14.5 or something like that? And another part that I wanted to just touch on was we're allocating, again, this is the library, 
more money for the library. If we were to level fund that, we'd probably save 80, 90,000 there. And if we could scrape another 10,000, say, off of the 4th of July thing, that'd be another 100K. That might go a long ways to getting the citizens to pass this budget. I can, I can address the level fund. So um, we, I asked the same question because uh, what the library is um, asking for an additional revenue from what they were level funded for two years in a row was an additional 113,000 um, 113350 dollars. So what does that translate to, to you as a taxpayer? Um, so we ran the metric. Um, if we were to level fund the library and your house was appraised at $500,000, what you would save on your municipal tax bill is $34. I, I understand how right. that works. I'm right. just saying, you know, it's almost, and I hate to even use this term, a goodwill gesture for the people in the town that want to see the budget come down some. That's all, that's all I'm trying to say. I get it. I understand what you're saying. Because I think the budget as proposed, I mean, I really, really hate to see this not pass. And so, you know, maybe we need to take a, a few more even drastic measures, if you can call it that, to try to scrape out a little bit more and let and advertise this and let people know that you know we're we're doing all we can do that's all okay and did, did we get a number on the fourth of july tina yeah. i mean that goes up in smoke in 20 minutes um yeah the fourth of july proposed is fourteen thousand fifty dollars that includes uh the sound system as well as paying for the fireworks Thank and you. the fireworks are approximately the fireworks are probably 12 or more, maybe 12,000, I think. Oh, okay. they, they've gone up. Yeah. Tina, is, <laughs> that, like else. Tina, is that fairly comparable to the prior year? There was a huge jump two years ago. Mm -hmm. It went from 6,000 yeah. to 10,000, yeah. and now it's gone to 12. Mary Lou, I would, would I would be remiss if I didn't say this for Eric Dodge right now, but if he was here, he would be saying, if there's one thing in the budget you don't play around with because you're going to get a ton of negative attention, it's the 4th of July. <laughs> okay. So I just I would mm -hmm. just throwing that out there. I hear you loud and clear, but I'll borrow a Jack from Jason next time I walk down to you. <laughs> so it works. Mary Lou, would you introduce yourself, please? Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you for um, all of you on the select board and all of the people that are actually there in person. I have a, a I have a bit of a fear. Um, I've been following this for a long time and I feel as though I am an informed voter. This is a very complex budget. It's very complex to listen to it. I want to thank Steph Hoffman, who I have heard her explanation, which is excellent. I've heard it at least five times. My concern is that the voters, when they go to vote this time, are going to see the same ballot. And there are some influences in our town who seem to have quite a bit of negativity on front porch forum. And one comment the other night being said was very concernable when a person goes up to the mic and says, I'm voting no, and I'm taking 999 voters with me. Now that's an emotional, yes it is. But it's also, my concern is, I don't think the voters in this town who voted no, if they're 900, know anything different than they knew maybe three or four months ago. I'm hoping, but just like the last gentleman said, there hasn't been any advertisement. I don't know how the information is getting disseminated to see all of this hard work, the complexity, the layers to the 999 who voted no. That's very, I'm very fearful about that, that that may be something it doesn't, that it doesn't pass again because it seems like what continually is being said is we're not going to pass this budget because we're afraid 
people are on a fixed income and they're going to lose their house. I don't know how many of people are are in that situation. My concern is that it seems to be a mass tactic of fear. And I'm not, I just, I don't know how to get around it. It's, it's worrisome in that the informed consent of the voter. And if this doesn't pass again, you know, I, I know people want to examine the town and the qualifications of the people that work in the town. I've heard this proposal to what are their skill set and all this, but what about the voters really? Is this the best way to be doing this with voters that are probably following the horse that's the loudest complainer or the the ones that have the most information to actually make the best decision for the town? I, I There is no answer. It's just, it's been on my mind now for about two or three months. And uh, I want to thank you all for everything that you do. I, I like the information that's being put back to counter some of the misinformation. Front Porch Forum seems to be one of the go-to places for everyone. And then I guess just talking one person to the other. But I want to thank you all for all the hard work you've done, Judy and Tina and Paula and everybody that's sitting there in the room right now, especially the four or five, I'm sorry, the four select people. Um, your Should be five. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mary Lou. I think your point is well taken about information is key and and getting and talking to one another one to one is is uh, going to be very helpful. But we're trying to make sure we've got proper information, factual information on our website and trying to get people to go there to get information. We also have excellent people here in the town office who can answer questions. So I'm hoping people don't hesitate to contact our town employees who are well skilled and they know what they're talking about and go to our website too. Judy, if I may, um, Tom's I, think, next. I think that there's a, a several ways we can approach this, um, Mary Lou. Um, on our website, um, we've shown um, different budget years and what the progression has been. And uh, in a conversation with our, one of our former select board members who I uh, really value uh, my relationship with, uh, Travis Sabatasso, uh, we've been bouncing ideas back and forth on how best to present factual information to this community. And um, in a conversation with him this afternoon, uh, we ran by some ideas. We did a, an FAQ um, that we published on our website. I think that we need to do that on Front Porch Forum again and put, potentially put it in the paper um, so that people understand exactly the changes that we're making, what we're proposing, and why it's a good idea. Um, the other thing that uh, we talked about as well is, is that if we can show the voters what the first budget proposed that failed, how the second budget that we proposed differed from the first budget and failed, and then how this third budget that we're hoping that will pass compares to the other two so that the citizens in this community can see the progression of what this board and the support staff here, uh, both in the field and under this roof, have taken to drill this thing down to a point where um, a, it's affordable, and B, um, we can hopefully um, move forward and take care of the core essential um, services that this community provides. And so those are the, some of the steps that I would propose that this board um, do uh, moving forward. I appreciate um, the, you know, the input that we're getting from this community. Um, and suggestions on how we do this. Uh, but there is a plan, and uh, between now and August 29th, we hope that we will be successful in getting that information accurately out to people. Tom, did you want to come up? Okay. Come on. Yeah, sir. Sorry. Yeah. Tell me, Tom. <clears throat> Tony, Cody, Cody Hill. Um, that would be me that said I was taking 999 voters. So I've had several emails since then. And people 
are going to vote no. Just so you guys know that. And I have nothing to do with it. Okay? I'm just relaying the message. There's several people out there that want to see pay cuts that we can't have now and position cuts. They think the town government's way too big. They think everybody's getting paid way too much. Uh, there's no sense of rehashing and rehashing. When we vote yes or no, then go back to the drawing board. So I kind of take that in offense up there that that lady just accused me of whatever I'm doing to people, I'm doing nothing to people. Okay, so just want you to clear the air, okay? All right, thank you. Thank you. So when the budget was defeated the second time, what I personally struggled with, and I voted for it, but what I personally struggled with was I couldn't remember what was approved and what wasn't approved on the first budget when it went down. So I like your idea of maybe bringing people up to date on what was approved. Like, I guess my question is, there's stuff that's definitely already approved, right? Yeah. And that's not up for grabs. It's the appropriations. Okay, so. And then the, I think the appropriations and then also um, some of the other line items that were approved. Well, uh, right. Highway fund. And highway, yeah. Okay, so like the library, it sounds like they're not going to get it. I don't know what's going to happen with the recreation person. And my question is, did Lamoille Health get their 10000 Oh, I don't recall. See, this is what I'm trying to figure out. And the reason why... <laughs> I'm bringing them up, and I'm probably going to get a lot of flack over this, okay? I worked for a federally qualified health center. There's a reason why you don't have personal doctors anymore, that they've all gone in with the, with the federally qualified health center. Their reimbursement rate is so much higher than a private practitioner. And I know this because I work for one. And the difference in pay, the reimbursement, was, was significant. And if you look at the other federally qualified health centers, they did public health. They went out in the community, they tried to educate people, blood pressure, all of that. I don't see these guys doing this. And if I were gonna slash somebody, they, that would be 10,000 I would throw back in the budget. They don't give the discounts that the other federally qualified, the, the amount of money in a discount. And so I think, you know, it's a matter of educating yourself. Can I? As far as the budget, oh, as far as. I was just going to speak to that. I know about the appropriations. There's some information that I'll share with you, but go ahead and finish. Yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt you. So my problem with this whole thing is that we're arguing over people threatening to shoot the budget down and taking however many people with them. And I wonder, of those people, did they do the table? Because when I did it, it was $300 more a month for a year for me. Okay, I'm 77. I'm still working to try and make ends meet. And I don't begrudge the town that. And I don't begrudge them the library, and I don't begrudge them the other. What's basically happening here, and it really hurts my heart as a social worker, is we either give everything to the senior citizens and take away from the kids, and there's no balance in here. There's just no balance. These kids are traumatized from not going to school for two years. And what are we thinking? What the hell are we doing here? And that's all I have to say. Did Thank you. you. Want to say something? Well, uh, the appropriations you're speaking of, um, the Lamoille Health Partners, I believe what you're speaking to is the facility they run on Union Street. Um, I don't know about that. Yeah. So the appropriations, um, the way they currently work is they. Um, you know, put in request that go before the voters. We have no power in that right now. And in this case, the appropriations, and I believe uh, they took over Union Street, which had been um, E equals MC square. And so they actually, um, and Tina, you can, there's a name for it. The, um, 
Was it actually Lamoille Health Partners that did the appropriation? Uh, yes, I believe it was. Lamoille, uh, do you want to come up? But they're a 50, I mean, they're a not for profit or? They're a 501C. Right, okay. I know exactly what they are. Yeah, they run, yeah, they run a uh, youth and uh, program on Union Street. Right, so okay. it's not it's not a health care facility. Right. But it's it's just like an after school type of, of uh, program that they're running. So just to answer your question, Pat, we have no we can't touch that money okay. that was put into the the bat and it was we did uh, get it this year so that everything was line itemed um, and it people voted specifically for that for ten thousand dollars. Now there's if we were to go to a charter governance, we're talking about. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm thinking about there's ways to kind of rein in because there's been concern about these unlimited amounts. Um, you know, they put out information. So uh, just so you know, we cannot touch that. The voters have voted for that. Well, um, I, yeah, I appreciate it. It will come up every year. Um, and I hope they don't vote for it. I'll be honest with you. When I have my private yeah. practice and I work for a federally qualified health center, if, and I don't know what the figures are anymore because it's been years since I worked for them. If I did Medicaid, I got $77. When I worked for the Federally health Qualified Health Center, they got $125. Yeah. So Pat, they don't need the money. We're going we're we're gonna, gonna, yeah, okay. to we're gonna stop. The voters here. decided, I'm sorry. You know, yeah, we're that's okay. So, I just yeah. no, we're not, we're gonna, we're gonna, example yeah. because I'm tired of trying to <laughs> we're gonna, between the elderly and the kids. Yeah, we're, st we're going we're to stick yeah, with, okay. the, with the agenda. Thank you. Can I say so? Yes. So, Mary Lou, I want to thank you for your, your comments. Um, certainly, there is a need to get as much positive information about this budget out as possible. I know uh, in the last week, Chris and I have put a couple of front porch forum posts out there. There's one in regards to the library and the funding of the library, and there's one in regards to the recreation coordinator and um, the police and uh, so we're getting those out there we're probably not getting enough out there I will say that there are a lot of people that are feeling very positive about this budget right now and I know when people write me and I'm getting as many I'm getting many more emails that are very positive about this budget right now and I'm asking those people to please Please talk it up. We've got to start talking to each other and we've got to talk to our friends, we've got to talk to our neighbors, and we need to get our viewpoint out there because I think we've uh, I think those people have been quiet and uh, they need to get they need to get louder. We need to pass this budget. It's absolutely absolutely paramount as far as I'm concerned. This town's been through way too much over the last six months, five months since February really and we're really beginning to see the negative consequences of this especially tonight look at the conversation we've had about the library I don't I didn't walk in tonight thinking that that was going, going to get voted down it did I voted against it um, I support the library but there was a lot of convincing arguments look at what's happening with our EMS we're asking these people to work for us for three bucks an hour. We're trying to get a budget through so we can pay them 15 bucks an hour. Fire. They get paid a stipend right now instead of an hourly rate. This new budget will pay them an hourly rate. It will make a difference. This was part of the conversation last week. So I want to be really clear about that. This new budget takes care of, I'm not going to say all of that, but a lot of it. One of the things that we haven't talked about, and I'm going to bring it up now a lot, we haven't talked about this a lot, is those people who are on fixed incomes, those residents who aren't in a fortunate situation where they can easily pay all their bills, they are able to apply and get a homestead exemption. They are, they can apply, and they are able to get an education exemption. 
And I encourage those people that have heard that they might lose their homes or are feeling like they can't pay this tax to come in and find out exactly what their tax burden is. If they're in that situation, it's a pretty generous cap. It's above a hundred thousand dollars for a household. It's above a hundred thousand dollars. That's pretty generous. If you're under that, you're getting an exemption. Find out what you're getting. And find out that the numbers that are being thrown around are not real numbers for you. They might be for those people that are getting in excess of $100,000, but those numbers aren't going to be true for you. We need to start talking about this. It's been around for a while. The state of Vermont has had a pretty generous program for property tax rebates for a long time. And it hasn't been part of the discussion. And I, for one, am willing to be part of that. I have reached out to one person in particular who is, doesn't always agree with me when it comes to the budget. And I'm kind of hoping that maybe we can come together on this one and, and get that word out there. But talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, talk to your family members, find out what's really going on there. Um, Mary Lou, you're right. We just have to do a better job of getting the word out there. But I would ask that everybody join us in getting that word out there. Find out what you can about this budget and spread the word. We've got to get it passed. The town has been through way too much. And in my mind, it's, it's just, it's got to end. I mean, we can't, we just can't keep this up. I think 7.7% .7 is very reasonable. I think it's 7.7 .7 is very responsible. I started this discussion way back in, way back in January, and that first budget, which was admittedly very high, I peeled off a whole bunch of things that in January had gone up 30 percent for me. This is 7.7 .7 percent. It's, it's much lower. It's, it's, it's responsible. It's reasonable. We have cut a lot of money. Mary Lou, you're right. I guess we need, and Chris, you know, we need to remind people what we cut after that first budget. It was nearly a million dollars. And we've continued to cut and find savings. I'm not sure there's a lot more to say. I think this is, this is quite, quite reasonable, as I've said. Thank you. I'd like to call on Kristen on Zoom. Could you introduce yourself, please? She's muted. Kristen. Kristen, can you unmute? Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. OK, great. Thank you. Um, I represent probably uh, the people in town who do have concerns about um, the increases in the budget, um, but who also recognize that at this point in time, because this conversation started pretty late in the budgeting process, and because it's taken so long to get to this point, that um, it's being for myself, I think this year should continue with the salaries, um, salary formulas that have been um, approved at prior meetings. Um, I also agree that overall a 7.7% .7 increase is fairly reasonable, especially in this inflationary economy. What I am really concerned about, however, is that a town like ours is um, it's a service company, if you will, and the service industry always takes its largest portion of the budget from salaries and benefits. And what does still seem to be out of line to me is that we are working with a model that exposes the town, and that means all of us, to too much risk in either an inflationary economy or the opposite. Um, it also, I, I don't, I can't say that I have access to all the information that all of you have. But based on the information that has been provided, 
Um, it also appears that the step increase policy probably needs to be looked at again to, to decide whether that really is best practice. Um, there are many industries where performance reviews are used instead of an automatic step um, or other formulas. And I think that both um, the CPI formula and the step increases uh, are really what's led to the major budget problem that we're having. I am in no way saying that people who work for the town don't deserve um, the salaries that they have, but it does appear to me that it's really time to look hard at this and look at what other towns are doing and not just keep going with the status quo. So because that is my primary concern, I think that you, and that I know many, many other people share that concern. I think one step that you could take towards convincing people to support this budget is to also publicize your commitment to um, relook at um, this policy and also have it have it analyzed to really engage with the deeper questions because I think we've all been in sort of crisis mode at this point for the last several months with knowing that the union contracts were approved it isn't fair to other town employees not to you know, to have sort of two different ways of dealing with the increases um but my fear is, is that if we don't commit to taking a harder look at this model um we are we're just going to perpetuate the status quo and that the increases are not going to be sustainable going forward, no, nor will they ne necessarily be best practice. Thank, um, thank you. Thank you, Kristen. And this board has talked about this um, many times over the past couple of months. And we, are, I, we haven't taken a vote on it, but I think we're all in agreement that we're going to look at a ceiling and a floor going forward. And that, that's going to be the process. Right. Then I would I would make that a big part of your PR campaign if you're going to embark on one. Right. It, it doesn't. That, it, will, it will not affect this budget you're voting on in August. I understand that, but I think that one reason that, that again, using myself as a test case, that I have um, not supported the budget, is that I am afraid that if we just keep going forward, that there after it's passed there will be um a lapse and that the status quo will just continue um so okay. anything that you can do to make sure that people don't feel that way i think will go a long way towards um what the end outcome that you want okay thank you so um go ahead come on uh, jamie jarrett I have a concern regarding the $340,000, or if you want to break it out, $240,000 and $100,000. Basically what you're doing is putting a Band-Aid on the budget. If next year you don't have that luxury of taking dollars out, we're going to be in a worse predicament than we are this year. So that's my concern. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Carly, do you want to do it now? Um, did you just do you want, call Carly? I, I can call him. Do you want to go first? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, okay, sorry. <clears throat> um, I totally believe I back Kristen on everything she just said. And I think we can get away with this year's budget if you guys promote out there that it's you're going to set a different policy next year. And you also need to look at the steps on how they were changed. Um, my other thing is, is on the fireworks, has anybody looked into having fireworks that don't have the boom in them? Because would that be cheaper? Um, <laughs> Actually, because it's a trigger to a lot of people, you know, if you have war vets and things in the area and dogs and everybody, it's really a trigger for a lot of people. So 
that's a suggestion that maybe somebody could look into that. Um, uh, I'm just going to speak to that quickly. I was at the um, International Fireworks Festival a while back, and it, interesting enough, the Americans are famous for how loud their fireworks are, and that other countries are not near as loud. It has to do with how um, the Americans make them. Um, so there are other fireworks that are not as loud, um, but they're from other countries and they're very expensive to get. So, um, kind of a weird problem, but that's the reality of living in America. We're loud. <laughs> okay, I still have a, a comment and concern when you get there. Thank you. Thank you. So I, w I just wanted to speak about some things because I, um, I've been speaking to people all over, and I think uh, again, there's this misnomer that there's this group out there and I can tell you that I have talked with people from all realms of Morrisville very very successful businessmen um, people you know uh, retired young coming up and the uh, you know again highly highly educated people who really come to me and talk to me about the numbers because they can analyze them and read them and and the concerns I'm hearing um, is that exactly what um, Jared, uh, Jamie, thank you, sorry, Jamie said, was that the 240 being applied to it um, is somewhat, you know, because we don't have that next year, and that's exactly why I was asking is what is the number before we take that away? And I, I think it came at 11.3. Before we have any adjustments, Tina Sweet, finance Thank director. Um, the whole idea behind creating a what you call an emergency fund and putting that 10% cap on it, the whole idea behind that is that you are supposed to use anything above and beyond that to defray the cost of future taxes. And I know what you're saying. Yeah. You, you run a risk when you do that. But the other option is what? We let, let it just sit there and it never does any good to the taxpayers? I mean, that is the way the system is supposed to work. Okay. Again, I'm just I'm telling what people are saying is because that money also could be used for other things. And again, I'm just, sure. this is what I'm hearing and, you know, um, that's what they're saying. And that, again, the concern is, is that when we start this over next year, we're going to be starting with basically a budget that is at 11.3, but because of the current salaries, when you start compounding, and yes, you know, we're talking about it, but that things are so out of balance right now that there's huge concerns, again, about the compounded effect um, going forward, uh, forward, and there's also huge concerns about what people have said about the status quo that we you know, that Morrisville just cannot be an open wallet. Um, and that even with this budget, they, they're concerned about the sustainability. Now, yes, we can, I've been adv uh, advocating redoing this longevity plan, which could make huge differences. And again, I, I'm really adamant that we need to get a consultant in here to get things balanced because we've got EMTs. I, I know another gentleman who was offered $10 more um, per hour and and the fact that um, you know no one's seriously talking about that we've got to change that and again trying to get a comprehensive independent study that's looking and what they do is they basically look at each um, uh, each uh, job description in each employee and do a whole analyzation um, and compare it and it's they have information that our normal people can't access and yes it's it would a rough estimate is about fifteen thousand dollars and any information from other towns they don't share this information and it's not applicable to us but i think that would go a long way in um um you know, people that we're making a difference and that we really are looking at it. Otherwise, it's just ad hoc and we're still, we're, con we're continuing on. Um, and again, that's what I'm hearing. And I'm hearing 
uh, a lot of people that are, are not for with this budget because of fears of how it's setting us up for next year. Okay. Holy cow, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna go up there. Now I've got the two of you, okay. Uh, Tommy on um, Zoom. Uh, yes, this is Nancy Donovan. And Laura is exactly right. We need to have a comprehensive study. If not doing that, we're trying to be um, penny wise and pound foolish. We, and we need to plan for the future. And I think what a lot of things I am hearing from people is we, we have expressed concerns about this is not tenable for this to continue with the way that the employee longevity plan is set up. We do have too many people on the payroll. We and and, and you guys want to keep adding people like the rec person from part time to full time. We've asked, can't that wait? And you are insistent that it has to happen this year. And voters are not feeling like they are being heard. And it is not tenable to keep on this path that we're on. It's just absolutely ridiculous. It's costing the town money every time we vote because we have board members who are not listening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you want to Paris? As what you were saying, Laura, about the uh, the two, well, that gentleman back there said about the 240000 that we mm -hmm. took out of the emergency fund, plus we pillaged the asphalt of 190000 and we cut the road crew mm -hmm. on top. So next year, it'll be five or 600000 just to get back down to a kind of an even plane, because mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to kick the can next year on the road. Yeah. So that's going to be a, a problem. Yeah. So you. if I could just take a moment sure um, I think that there's a couple of conversations that need to go on here one is is that every municipality who has a fund balance whether it's in unallocated reserve funds or carry forwards from different departments use that money to offset the next year's budget to reduce taxes that's just good management I mean, if you take a look at the city of Burlington, they ran a $5 million deficit this past fiscal year. They rated every reserve count that they had in their municipality just to make up the $5 million. Uh, we're not doing that. What we're doing is we're taking unallocated money that needs to move out of this account because there's a cap of 10% on it and moving it over to reduce what we need to pay in taxes this coming year. $100,000 coming out of the fund balance from the, this fiscal year, which is predominantly from highway, um, is in addition to that. It lowers the tax burden. There's other ways, you know, that we are going to approach a 24-25 budget. I mean, we can take a look at restructuring our debt service. We can take a look at things like if we're buying trucks, you know, um, are we are we financing them over the life expectancy of them or the warranty period? If we're buying a new uh, fire truck, what's the longevity uh, anticipated for that vehicle? Do we want to finance it over 10 years or is it good for 15 or 20? So do we want to finance it over 15 or 20 years? I think that we need to take a look at different ways to reduce our tax burden and spend our money wisely so that we can stop focusing on 9.7% or 7.7% and really get down into the meat of things that are gonna make a difference for this community to, to not only do it financially prudent, but also to plan for the future and make sure that we get the things done that we need to get done. You know, we all know that, you know, if we're gonna spend money on paving, you know, how do we finance that? Are we doing it the best way? Do we need to take a look at a different metric? We know that shim coats don't last as long as a grind and two lifts. We also know that it doesn't last as long as a road reconstruction. So how are we paying for that? And how are we, you know, delineating the life expectancy and paying it over that life expectancy rather than into a, just a finite amount of time. I think there's a lot of ways we can look at approaching the way we do business. And um, and that's what we need to be working on. We've got a municipal building and they're paying $100,000 a year for that we don't own. 
You know, why are we having this conversation when we really should be putting out RFPs and, and, and taking a look at the best use of the property that we do own? I mean, Tony Cody sat here and said, maybe we need to look at a, at a, at a uh, carport system. And that may very well be the best solution, but we need to be able to work on those things because we've got a year and a half left on this lease. And if we don't start today working on this, we may not solve that problem. We may be spending a lot more money where we are over in Creamy Road. That's the stuff that makes a difference to us. And those are the things that really flow down to our bottom line. And we're, we're penny pitching this thing to death and, and there's no room left in here, but there's a lot of room left in, 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 in looking forward to how we treat salary raises, how we treat financing. That's the hard work that this board needs to do and we need to get to it. Thank I you, just, Chris. I wanna say, Chris, I do agree with you and I think um, going forward, and I also wanted to address that uh, I ran the numbers, um, what it's gonna do to my taxes and part of the problem is my taxes are already so high and it's, I'm not sure, you know, Mine's going to be significant. And also to address the homestead rebate, yes, you know, uh, the cap is high, but there's other things that go into it because my homestead rebate went down last year. And I called my accountant and asked her why, and I was somewhat amazed. It was like, oh, well, I didn't, you know, realize that that affects the homestead rebate. So it's not just a, there's a lot more things that go into it. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things going on. Um, and I do think there are a lot of people who are very worried. Um, and, you know, I, I'm somewhat amazed that nobody's mentioned that we are in national disaster area right now. It's, it's huge. Um, and I can tell you that businesses before the flood came, uh, restaurants and that were down about 20%. And this is all the businesses in Stowe. And they're not, no one's quite sure why. Um, if inflation come back, but um, it, for the 4th of July is usually uh, a huge weekend. And they were down 20% from, you know, where they should be. Um, and now we've got floods. So I think that's also what people have a, are concerned about is that, um, you know, we have some huge expenses and revenues for the state are going to drop. Um, and, you know, we've lost Oxbow for um, hopefully not long. Um, but there's some other factors here that it's not business as usual. And I hate to be the pessimist, but, um, and I do, you know, I do not want this budget to fail. However, we have got to get a budget that is um, passable. And I, I will say that the last budget, there were, it was, four people voted for it and I decided to vote for it because I did not feel like the board was listening. Um, and I, I knew that it was, I was pretty clear it was gonna fail and it did. Um, going forward, I won't do that because I was accused of, um, uh, you know, many things about it. Um, and I think it's important. We also need to get a town manager in here because I can tell you as a select board, I cannot go through this process again to have, you know, three budgets or two budgets fail and no work. Um, and I really feel like um, trying to, to get a group of the select board and department heads to manage a $10 million budget does not make sense. And people, I'm glad to hear we actually have some people applying for the select board because I can tell you most people do not want to because the first thing they say is you have to be very, very thick skinned and they will not come if they feel that they have a business that can be affected. Um, and one of the ways we're going to get around that is by having a manager who somewhat insulates us from, you know, that potential disaster. Uh, and we have to realize that we're now, we're getting close to a $10 million budget. It's 7.7. 7. Uh, 7.7, 7, but. It's 7.7, 7. that's the budget. So that's, it's still, but next year it'll be a little bit, but. You, you're yeah. saying some things here, Laura, that. Well, you, we need Chris, to please, it. it's my, let me, it's my, I listen to you, so you can listen to me, and please don't contradict me, okay? 
Um, so that. even at a even at a th eight thousand eight million dollar budget, to expect people, you know, this is a very complicated job anymore, and to have people that understand labor contracts and understand highway, it's it's become a very very um, you know difficult job. Uh, it is, and if we you know if we don't get people in here, then that's how we get into trouble. So. Um, that's all I'm going to say, and I please ask that you don't contradict me. It's my opinion, and I would like it to stand. Thank no, you. I was just correcting the number that you were using. Yes, thank you for, yeah, we're still heading towards. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was supposed to ask. I had this other person. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Evelyn from Morrisville. Yeah, there's um, there's a lot that can be done going forward, and I really I think that a lot of good ideas have come out of this. It's like painful. It's a really painful process, <laughs> but sometimes out of pain, some good things can be reaped. And I do think that um, Chris, you've come up with some really good ideas. I hope that you can put them in a form that people can have get hope from you get reelected first oh uh, yeah well, uh, well <laughs> i can't do that um but uh and laura i think you have some good ideas about um i do well other people have talked about a town manager i think that people are going to be shocked at how much they have to pay this town manager and so i hope that they can just start getting prepared now if they think that's a good idea um there's something to be said for having a study. Then again, are people going to, how many people are going to really dig down on the details and understand what that study is and and accept it? That's not, that's maybe, the, maybe a study person would have a good way of doing PR, which I think you guys have, have to do that. Um, I think we do have to get the, the uh, salary thing under control uh it's it's a huge concern it's a legitimate concern about from by people there are efficiencies that possibly some things could be combined and positions could be cut we could work on that uh building you know that's there's there's a f some things not in the actual work in the highway department and but in the uh creative creative ways of making it more efficient that because that's a big part of the budget and understandably um these are all things going forward. And I don't think that we can let the perfect be the enemy of the possible. And the possible is now. The possible is this budget, here now, and it's not talking about what happened in the past that brought us to high taxes and then we add this onto it. It's not talking about the future, although hopefully, like I said, some pain has brought some good ideas out. I hope you listen to people. You know, I know Tony had a good idea about the, about the, um, helping the tra highway department with those uh, bays, you know. Maybe Jerry can help with some of that, you know. And, um, but I don't think that we want to, like Chris said, nickel and dime it to death right now. Uh, it, it, would be, it would be penny wise and pound foolish to the nth degree to not have a, to not have a recreation uh, director go full time. A, she's been promised it and told about it. B, we might lose her if if we don't. And understandably, not out of spite, out of need, because people need full time. They need benefits, and and then when they have all that time, they can write grants and pay for themselves. So don't look at a number and say, "Wow, we need to throw a bone to people with this little number." That doesn't make sense spending wise it's not a good fiduciary use of town money and that's what that's what the budget does it spends money on the town now what's a good way to do that thank you yeah so that's all thank you thank you okay tom i'll take <clears throat> my name is tom cludier and everybody here everybody on zoom we love this town or we would not be here we love this town and we want to see it thrive again and we've had problems with this budget twice and hopefully we get through it but but this is what we see out there the, the voter 
you wanted to know what that it, what the figure is without the the three thousand three hundred and forty thousand dollars. And by the way, that that, that does not there just to lower lower uh, this budget. There's other reasons we voted for for any cover covering any anticipated revenue shortfalls and to pay and, and unanticipated anticipated expenditures. That's what that $320,000 was for. And we now up to 340,000. So the cuts in the general without that is the, the cost of the general uh, government is 40% increase. That's a problem. But on top of that, if you go down here, it's the fire department minus 4%. This is what voters is looking at. Minus, we've taken money from the fire department. This is even worse when you look at the EMS. They were 3.5, I believe, the last budget. Now they're down to 3.7. You actually cut their training room out and gave it a copley. Leased it a copley, I guess. That's what you say here. This is what the this is what the, the the voters out there see. This budget's backwards; it's upside down. You have all kinds of money in this this bill in here. Not enough for our EMS, not enough for our fire, and not enough for our policemen. All the budget, three, three over three million dollars in salary for this small town. Not a cent. Not one cent was cut in that. This is what the this is what we see out there as voters, and this is what you look. If you want to get this passed, somehow you got to explain how that's okay. How is it okay to take three hundred and forty thousand dollars that next year that should have been paying for something? Next year we're going to have to pay something with that three hundred forty thousand dollars. Whether it's a truck, whether how about a, a kitchen for the EMS? And thank you, Paula, for letting me know that the police department need a kitchen too. No, 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 no. Okay, well, all right. <laughs> they need a, yeah, correct, uh, that's good. But a nice okay. kitchen would help. Thank you, a Tom. nice kitchen would help that EMS immensely. You talk about the, the, the morale. Imagine the morale by just saying, okay, we know you're out the EMS, we're going to give you a kitchen, $10,000. Thank you. Less than a fireworks display. That's what you've got to get over to the people. And Don, I will put out, it's a sad state of affair, but we will get out the information to these people who are going to need to know that they have the homestead and other resources that can help pay their taxes. It's sad that we're at this situation, but I'll be more than willing to, to help in any way to let these people know. Thank you. Um, Will Spaulding. Um, Chris, I want to collect, uh, correct you. You've got to get elected, not reelected. Okay. <laughs> and I will vote for you, and I hope everybody else here does too, because it seems obvious to me, this isn't your first rodeo, that the time you spent doing this job in Waterbury for many years is paying us dividends now and hopefully into the future. So good luck on Election Day. Um, and as far as um, unallocated reserves or, or Money's allocated, not spent. It's uh, my time in the school board. It happened every year. There were categories of money that were not spent. They were budgeted for certain categories. They weren't spent. They got rolled forward to the next year to defray taxes. Okay. We hope it happens next year. We can't. We don't have a crystal ball, but it may not happen in the same way next year as it did this year. Um, it certainly sounds, though, that this discussion has, you know, again, given some great ideas, some great thoughts for the future. Um, I hate the idea of uh, our town employees um, not getting paid every cent they deserve, but if there are built-in increases 
um, that need to be looked at and adjusted, so be it. Um, I'm trying to think there was another point I was going to make. Oh, um, this woman spoke so eloquently about, you know, we're looking at the future and things we can do to change. This is now. We've, we've got we've to get the word out to folks to come out and vote and support the budget. 7.1% um, again seems very responsible for me um, compared to where we were the last two budget uh, vote cycles. And um, I just um, hope folks in town take that to heart, get out and vote. Um, come to the town clerk's office if you're concerned about paying your taxes. Get help from um, um, Ms. Haskins and her assistants and use all the tools. And um, uh, so you know what your true tax burden is. I know I've done it and it was very helpful. Um, that's all I'm going to say th except for thanks for all you guys are doing for us. Thank you. You had your Can hand I up just before. Say, Did you Judy? Yeah, Can I just say ahead. real quick, I, I just want to be clear. We are taking money out of the unallocated fund, but we're leaving $660,000 there. So it's not like we're depleting this fund. There's a lot of money <coughs> left over. So that is the cap. Yeah, 10% of last year's operating budget is being left there. So don't think that we're, you know, we don't have money in the bank there. We, we do. So. Judy? Okay. Yes, sir. Oh. Go ahead. I just got one quick. As, as far as the police chief goes, and this has been said before, but I think it's very important for people to understand the police department, the fire department, and EMS cannot function without the folks that work in this building. We don't do our own payroll. We don't, uh, we write our grants, but we don't take care of the grants. You know, we got HR, we got finance, we got Judy. We cannot function without the folks in this building. Even though they don't wear a police uniform, they do a lot of jobs related to law enforcement and the operation of the administrative operation of the police department. So I keep hearing that week in and week out, and I just don't know if, if I just want to make it, make it clear that our three emergency services couldn't function without the folks that work in this building. Thank you, Jason. That's very helpful. Thank you. Jan Paris. Uh, Don, I, or I'm sorry, Judy, I'd like to know the allocated, unallocated fund, where it's going to be held at 660. Is there any funding going into that anymore, or will next year that still be at 660, whatever investments have made, but how does that work? Well, it's very possible that there's going to be unspent money during fiscal year 24 that would just add to that 660. So that's where that money came from in the first place. It was money that wasn't spent and went into that fund. And, it, it's, and but we it's do capped. have, and we do have a cap. You know, right. be, remember, we do have a cap. Right. The voters just recently voted voted the article at town meeting this year that capped the amount of money that could be in that fund at ten percent. Last year's operating budget was approximately six point six million. Right. So ten percent of that is six hundred sixty thousand. That's how much we're leaving in there. The two hundred and forty that people are batting around is the extra on top of the the hundred thousand coming from the highway fund this year. So we are leaving the maximum that we can leave in there. Okay, and so next year, if the budget was to pass, if it was 7.7 .7 or whatever, you'd be up to 770 or, 770. or you know, whatever yes. the noise. Correct, yeah. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Um, We've got one more. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Christy Snip. So um, hearing a lot about concerns about the property reassessment, I truly hope that anybody who is concerned or was concerned went through the grievance process for that. It was an opportunity to meet with the listers and, you know, share your concerns and perhaps have them come back with a, you know, better assessment for you. So I think that is closed now, but I, I really hope that people who are using that as a reason to defeat this budget at least made the effort to go through that. Um, I think when we talk about our community, we um, need to consider all of the vulnerable populations. We've talked a lot about people on fixed incomes and um, 
people with different abilities and and they're you know definitely deserve all of that attention but there are many vulnerable populations that um, we need to be considering and that is part of the reason why I so strongly support the rec position and the library it breaks my heart literally makes me sick the discussion that we've had about the library tonight um, I don't think we can understate what an asset that is to this community and um, lastly I think that you know everybody in this room um, is at least partly where they are today on the backs of the taxpayers who thought that they were worth the investment. I think that this community is worth the investment. I am willing to invest my tax dollars in it and, um, and I hope that everyone else will too. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to... Um, okay. I talked to Anna so when, you, when you say your name, come and say it to the mic because it's for okay. people at home. They can't hear you. Okay, so I'm Pat Michelson. I just want to say one thing. I talked to Anna McCormick. It's not just writing grants for recreation. We talked about other things that the town needed. We, we both know that there's like sidewalk money, there's road money, and that I agreed to work with her. So I just wanted to put that out there, that it's not just recreation, and it's a team effort on both of our parts, and I hope it passes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Allison Tool, Morristown um, resident, and I'll make it pretty quick. And I just hope that um, we don't cut the budget anymore, and that um, that we approve the budget, you know, going forward, and that we can move forward. And I think the I think the select board is committed to. Um, making changes and looking at things more carefully so that we're not in this situation again. I just hate to have to go through this again. Um, and, you know, if we don't pass this budget, then the department heads are going to have to all go back to the drawing board. They're going to have to cut more. They're going to have to come to these meetings and grovel and beg for our support and our money. And I just hate to have to see them do that again. So, and, and I do have to say that I've heard a lot of really good constructive um, comments and suggestions, and I think that mostly it's been very civil tonight on both sides, and I really appreciate that because I think it feels like we're moving forward in a more constru and constructive manner um, so that we can function as a um, wonderful, viable town that we live in. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm wondering if we are ready to uh, have put a motion on the floor. Well, I just want to say one thing. I do have concerns that this wasn't warned as uh, final and I know it was in minutes and things but there are a lot of people that their only information is you know they don't they aren't reading the minutes and that when they pull up the agenda to see what's going on the fact that it says budget discussion I do have a fear that we're going to have people say what well, it's I missed it and I'm not sure how to go forward with that um, but I do think it's a concern that it wasn't um, that we didn't give, didn't alert people that this was their final opportunity. And I'm not sure what the answer is here, but I, I'm concerned about it. So one thing that you folks can do is that um, we can have budget finalized on Thursday with the signing of the warning on Thursday. So tonight was budget discussions. The next signing of the morning, Thursday at 5 o'clock, is the finalization of the budget. And you can vote that night, and the warning can be printed that night and signed that night at 5 o'clock. So that is an option to that would allow people to have the budget discussions tonight that we did have. Because this is the people that are here for budget discussions. So the finalization of the budget can be on Thursday night. And when you finalize the budget on Thursday night, it isn't it isn't a time for discussion. So the discussions would be tonight, and the finalizing of the budget would be on Thursday night when you sign the warning. Right. So that, that explains. That's, yeah. That's a different. Yeah. And it so, can happen that way. Okay. Thank you. So what's the pleasure of the board? <clears throat> I kind of like what I just heard from Judy. We can finalize on Thursday night. We okay. warn the budget on Thursday on Thursday night. All right. But I think it's what you were saying, Judy, was is that the discussion pretty much ends tonight. Mm -hmm. that, that the meeting warrant for Thursday okay. is simply 
a vote of the board mm -hmm. and signing of the warning. Yes. Uh, that was always been my impression okay. that this is how things would unfold, really based on the July 6th meeting and the template that was laid out in terms of the meeting schedule and the timeline to finalize a budget, warn, the, warn it, and then have the vote. Mm -hmm. So I think because now, you know, we're at the 17th, you know, there's been plenty of time and discussion on this. Um, I'd like to stick to that schedule. I'm, I'm good with Judy's explanation too. I, <clears throat> I feel comfortable that that's, that we haven't done some kind of major violation. Okay, so moving, um, we're gonna move on to approve the warrants. Need a motion for that? I'll make a motion to approve the warrants. I'm second that, please. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All those, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, department head. Uh, any reports from the department heads? Uh, I'm sorry. If we were to finalize the budget, can't, should it not be after the discussion, or did we just decide we're not finalizing it tonight? We just decided we were not going to finalize tonight. Okay, because I cannot be here on the 20th. So. Can Judy, Don, and Chris be here on the 20th? Yes. 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 We have a quorum. Okay. Okay. Is it, any department heads would they like the report? This is just an opportunity. It isn't necessary that a department head report. Paula Beatty, HR Director. I'm not sure how to approach this. So I, I've heard repeatedly, so I don't really have a report, but I've heard repeatedly about doing a salary survey. So um, I think one of the issues is it feels like meeting after meeting, I hear the same thing and there's no action. So if that is the direction that the board would like to go, because I'm gonna start doing that project soon, um, it's not worth paying me to do it if your intent is to hire that out. So what I would like, instead of having repeated um, suggestions or comments to actually take a motion or an action on something and tell me what you would like what direction you would like me to go in I guess personally um, it hasn't been on the agenda because we don't have a budget so it didn't feel comfortable tr starting to spend money we don't have so that's where I'm coming from I, I think Paula that's a, a good comment on I would like to put it on the agenda I've asked for other things so um, you know, for some reason, and the priority was this, and somehow things keep getting bumped. I would also like to add the discussion of a manager on a budget, on the agenda. So if, you know, seeing that we're going <clears> to, <throat> this is going to be finalized, um, I do think you're right because, again, um, we need to make a decision. There's no point in you spending your time. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. I do have uh, the manager uh, on the budget, uh, on the agenda for, um, I think it was like September or something, but it is on, it is on an upcoming uh, agenda. Okay, yep, yeah. nobody told yeah. me, sorry. Well, I just, I'm right okay. now I'm so budget focused on getting yeah, this agenda okay. in minutes. Okay, uh, I just. I know it is a note that's on my file. Okay, yeah, I had asked and So I can add this one as well. Okay. And that wouldn't be till September 9th? No. I, I'm not really sure. I think okay. a lot of it depends on the budget. And, Okay. All right. Thank because you. Because that might be, we moved if the budget doesn't pass. Okay. So. Did you did you want to say something? Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Good evening, Kevin Barrows, the Highway Superintendent. Uh, I'd like to talk about the flood that we've just gone through, kind of twice in the last week. Right. So last Monday we had our big storm. Things took out power, water all the fun stuff that we're all dealing with, some roads. Uh, the one on Sunday that just came past yesterday took out some more roads um, that we've been working on repairing. The hardest hit this time was up on uh, Fraser Road on Trombley Hill. The storm was kind of weird because this side of the town got hit, this side of the town really didn't. Just the way the storms go through. Uh, so we've been working very diligent with that and trying to get everything done as, to our best of our abilities. Uh, one thing that I'm going to have to, hopefully, as we all know, we were up to pit this afternoon. 
Moving forward with that, gravel is going to be a, a huge discussion coming up fairly soon. Um, my stockpile has been depleted at this point, so I really don't have a whole lot left to repair a whole lot of roads if we happen to get some more flooding, which AOT is now saying tomorrow at noon until Wednesday morning at 2 a.m., we're back under another flood watch. So that's just a little bit of the world we live in, I guess. So Kevin, and talk and thinking about the pit, so we have a meeting before the DRB, the end of the month, this 26, month. 26, yes. So if, when, when and if that is approved by the DRB, our permit, then you can start in the pit, but I don't see us getting started like the next day. What do you Not think a timeline normal. is on that? I like would hope. I, I would hope. I mean, Mr. Percy said he's could be in there around the first of August. But still, um, but, he, get but, he's, out. but we won't. He won't be producing material now until probably mid to end August. Okay, all right. That's a long time. Right. Given, the given what's going on with our yeah. weather situation, yeah. yes. If this pattern of rain doesn't stop, we're gonna. I'm gonna have to buy some gravel. So, and again, this um, the wood. In the perfect world, it's going to be six hundred and sixty thousand. Can we access that to buy gravel in this? Because this would be an emergency, correct? Or can you speak to that, Tina? Um, yes, I can. That if that's possible to do that, but we do have other funds that we can borrow from without using our emergency okay. funds. We have our bridge and infrastructure fund that has money in it that we're not going to need for the Walton Road Bridge because we've got enough money to pay for the Walton Road Bridge. So we could potentially use that for Oxbow. We could potentially use that okay. for other road repairs if we needed to. Okay, because I, I know um, a, a someone asked about what happens. Um, and in this case, the, we, the vote won't happen until end of August. So those, those are Those funds are already for... funds that you have okay. the ability to utilize. Access for, would, okay. would any of the damage going on that Kevin's talking about be, would we use FEMA funds for it or not? Yeah, uh, it's my understanding we have three roads. That, Two, right now in the Oxbow. Oh. And, well, I, because right now, this, everything that happened on Sunday. Come on up to the oh. microphone. Sorry, Kevin. So everything that has happened on Sunday and the roads that were damaged then, I'm not... I haven't been told yet whether or not it's the same event or if it has to go through another declaration for FEMA. If it has to go through another declaration, it won't be counted as a FEMA event. Okay. If it's still part of the main event on that happened on last Monday, well, then it would be. So we're tracking it as if it is, but we don't have that information yet. I don't and, have that information. And Tina can kind of fill in the blanks here. but. Uh, the FEMA process is pretty um, uh, laborious. laborious, and they have, to, they have to follow certain criteria, and there's a lot of paperwork that has to be filled out, and they work in conjunction to get it filled out. And we had a storm here, um, a Halloween storm in 2019, I think, that we just got the money reimbursed to the town about six months ago. So it's a long, laborious process, and the town gets it, does get reimbursed, but it is a long time coming. Correct. Yeah. Thank Kevin, you, Tina. Thank you. Would you, um, I know that I spoke to you about the Oxbow and if there was any update from uh, FEMA or the state, um, do you want to just fill folks in a little bit about what you found out? So what I found out today from the Jim Ryan at the state was that we can go ahead and shore up what needs to be shored. We can fill up the holes. We can remove whatever materials down there, the gravel that's out onto the lawn, get that out of there. Um, we can repair the, or do our best to repair the parking lot so that it's usable with what is there for material. It, if it is deemed a FEMA event or FEMA would help reimburse that, well then we'd need to dig out all that material in that parking lot and put in, put in what needs to be put back there. Um, rebuild the, the parking area Does itself. Does it have to go through any um, Act 250 like toxicity reports nope. or? Nope. Jim Ryan said there was nothing okay. in the river gravel. The amount of contamination that was in it 
Would, the, the only thing he would suggest is not to obviously put it under a, a school playground. Okay. But we have the know. big hole that's over here by the generation system yeah. or that is going to take probably five to 6,000 yards, which would be, that would be not even enough to even scratch that, but we right. could get rid of it there okay. and, and use that material. Jason, where are we on? The park is just closed now. Why? Yeah, I got a report once we get okay. to the TA report. All right. I won't. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Can't we use the emergency fund money that we have that we haven't touched to do, take care of his roads? I mean, isn't that what's the money's there for? And that's what Tina did. That's what, Tina that's what you're going to use. Tina no. talked about Tina. that. We can use it, but we also have other funding that okay. we can use. Okay. Yeah. So that's there. We're not going to not do something because we don't have no, money. No, no. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. what she just reassured us that we will have roads and money. What he was saying, though, is that we don't have access to the gravel in the right. gravel pit, so yeah. we're going to probably have to buy gravel. Got to yeah. buy gravel. So. Um, um, town administrator's report. A uh, few things. So, select board petitions are due July 24th at 4 p.m. If there's any other petitions that are floating around of the rumored town manager, that would need to be in by July 20th at 4 p.m. Uh, the other business is mostly related to the flood. Uh, there was a significant amount of town employees that worked overnight through the flood from the fire department to EMS, police, and highway. Worked uh, all night, Monday night and into Tuesday. And then this past weekend, again, as Kevin mentioned, those guys are out most of the both days. Uh, Oxbow is closed right now. We've tried to barricade it. We tried to tape it. There are still people that are going down there. We did put some keep out signs for some liability reasons. Uh, I went down with Trish, looked it over today, got her input on it. Uh, we are working with the state. The rumor is FEMA is going to be in town this week, potentially on Thursday. So that's one of the sites we'll be bringing them to, as well as the other town roads that Kevin mentioned. So right now we're kind of just uh, standing by to stand by on the Oxbow. The bathrooms are closed, and we don't plan on opening up until the park's back opened up at this point. Um, I'm sure everybody knows about the water issue right now, the boil order. We have been working uh, very closely with Morso Water and Light and Copley Hospital to make sure that we have water here in town for people to drink. And the last thing, you know, it's just, it was pretty good to see a lot of the community members reached out to us during the storm, uh, offering food and volunteer help. So it was good to see the community come together. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Um, select board comments. Let's start. Laura. I, I, think, I've said, <laughs> I think I've said everything. Um, I, again, I just want to, I'd like to get these things on the agenda so that we can um, assure the voters that we are moving forward because um, I think that's important that we have learned a lot from this and that um, as soon as we can get those in the on the agenda and um, take take what we've learned from these budgets and move forward so that we don't are not in this position certainly as long as I'm in office <laughs> selfish concerns um, and just um, you know again I'm impressed with the resiliency of this town um, there's uh, a very large um, provider of restaurants who donated dropped off huge things of water at both uh, Tin Railroad and Lost Nation uh, which is uh, wonderful to see everybody kind of rallying I know um, you know I had gallons of well water in my car for anybody who needed and I saw tons and tons of posts on front page forum come pull from my well I had people come to my well and so you know out of the darkness you know uh, you hate to say it but um, these tragedies you know do bring people together and it makes you realize what is important and um, you know and that we do have a great community and um, like everything, we'll get through it, and there will be tomatoes. Will be. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm worried about, tomatoes. <laughs> Don? Uh, so first of all, just many thanks to the highway department for getting things back together quickly. Um, certainly appreciate that. We're glad we had minor 
disruptions, but thank you for getting our roads back together. Our fire department, EMS department, and police department for all the work that they did uh, supporting road closures, supporting people that were that, that needed help right away during the flood. And of course, all the people in the, working in the town office that were that were there supporting their, the efforts of, of the other four departments. Uh, I just wanted one thing. I want to be clear on. I've already alluded to this once, but uh, the decision we made about libraries tonight was was tough. I just want to be really clear that I very much support the library and I very much support increasing the uh, appropriation for the library. Um, and. There's been a lot said tonight, so I'm not going to go through my whole list here because it's most, it's a lot of it's already been talked about. But uh, to be clear, once again, I am very interested in revisiting the uh, the raise structure. Um, I think this whole board is, and just want to be clear that we are interested in looking at this idea of a floor and a ceiling to uh, raises coming down the road. That's it. Chris? Honestly, uh, I can't really add anything more to what Don said. I couldn't agree more. So. Good, thank you. I just want to thank uh, everyone in the town offices, especially our financial department, who has been asked to redo the budget over and over and over again. And thank you for your patience and your diligent work. And I know I think the town clerk's office, but everybody in this building, besides all the, the EMS and the, and the highway and the police, they're doing their job too, and the fire. But the town offices are, 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 uh, have been under attack, um, and they're hidden. Nobody sees the work that they do. People don't see it out on the street like they do um, the other people who are working for us. So thank you. <laughs> and we have, did I move to executive session? What? Community concerns. Or oh, community, I'm sorry. I'm community sorry, comments. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. Not I'm not too anxious here. <laughs> um, go ahead. Come on up. Community comments. Laura Green, Morrisville. I just want to say that I really hope this budget passes because how much did you say it costs for the ballots and all of that for one About vote? Ten grand. Like Ten thousand. We've done this. How many times? Twice now. Like, well, we had, what? We've had three votes, really, but yeah. one at, at, the, um, at the school. We can't, we can't afford to do that again, and we can't afford to stretch our employees <laughs> like that again. So I hope it passes. That's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Carly's iPad. <laughs> Yes, I'm getting a new iPad and I'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just identify yourself, please? Um, Kathy Chafee. So um, I have concerns and I'm not blaming any of you because I think it's the way it's always been. Um, I don't expect to have discussion on this tonight because it's been a long night. But what I would like for you to do is... Um, Judy went and got something for me. So what I would like Judy to to do is to read um, the section one on page 33. Um, and I would like to just briefly point out things that concern me. And then the next meeting in two weeks, I would like to discuss this, if that would be um, OK. Kathy, I did not have that copy here. Mine was. Uh a shortened version like Laura's. I thought mine was longer, but it was not. But I can assure you that the board probably knows what the rules and regulations are on open meeting law. Well, okay, so, um, uh, um, I, and I think they do, but I don't think that they're being followed. And I think it's for, for the best interest of everybody. So, um, Sure what, what I will do is I will take this and I will highlight the, 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 the portions that I have questions on, Judy, and I will email them to you tomorrow. And then I would like to be either on the agenda or the next meeting we have a discussion on this because 
there's just some things that definitely the rules are not being followed on executive sessions. Um, so you're, pri you're primarily concerned about executive session, how we're following it? Yes, I am. Okay. Well, so just briefly here, you have a lot of executive sessions and um, an executive session is limited statutory um, exceptions to the opening meeting law. A select board may. Okay, so let me just put this down briefly for you. Uh, when you make a motion to go into executive session, the, the motion must state the nature of the business to be discussed in executive session. Okay, you, 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 you group all th three things together, so we really don't know. So in this writing, you should tell us why you're going into executive session and you <coughs> shouldn't be grouped together. And then in the other thing, it says... Um, it, uh, it must pass by a majority of the members present and the result of the vote must be entered into the minutes, which we know that. No other matter may be discussed in the session, and this is where I'm questioning, and no binding votes or actions may be taken until the board comes out of the session and, it, and is again an open meeting. So when you come out of executive session, we don't know how anybody votes in an exec executive session. So when you come out of an executive session, um, you can't take action or votes until you come out of the executive session. So I'm not, um, I'm not blaming anybody or anything. I'm just reading from the select board handbook and there's three sections with questions like that. Um, the only binding action that be taken in an executive session is related to the security the securing of real estate options. If a vote or resolution is required or desired on any other topic discussed in the executive session, it must be taken in an open meeting and not in the executive session. Correct, and so, that's how we've been running our executive sessions. <coughs> Kathy, just to be clear, since I've been on the board, there's never been a vote in executive session. We don't take any action in executive session. We always come out, we come, we're usually in this room for executive session. We were upstairs today because um, we didn't want to have everybody else have to leave the room. So we did that to, uh, just for, for comfort for everyone. But there was no vote taken at executive session today. Today. Today and okay, there everyone. and there isn't and yeah. usually we, I'm, I should have fi finished this. So we come we're in this room. We usually uh, come out of executive session and then we take a vote if a vote is necessary. And then we adjourn the meeting. And a lot of times, Kathy, if there's no vote that's going to be happening, and we know that based on why they're going into executive session. But if there is a vote, it's on the agenda because it is it has to be an agenda item. So if you see um, after an executive session, there's discussion or a vote, that will be on your agenda. You will see that. Okay, so you're going, um, when you go into executive session tonight, you're gonna say, and I don't know those three things, um, personal, what are the three things you say? Le personnel, legal, and I don't know what the third one is. There's, there's if, you, if you Google VSA 313, Kathy, it will tell you all about it. There's. They can go into executive session for contracts, labor relation agreements, arbitration and, medita and mediation, grievances, pending probable civil lit litigation or a prosecution to which the public body is or may be party to, confidential attorney-client communications, yeah. negotiating, securing real estate, the appointment or employment of a uh, evaluation of a public officer or an employee, a disciplinary or a dismissal action, um, there's a whole section that talks about it. I can guarantee you, if you look at the select board packet, there's on page 22, it says possible executive session legal and the suggested motion that Don read before they went into executive session with our attorney who teaches us this. That's who we take our lessons from. Uh, it says right on here, probable civil litigation is in that motion. The next motion they're gonna do later on tonight is for personnel, and that motion is also there, and it talks about going to an executive session for personnel. So there are very specific reasons to go into it, and there's very specific things that they can do and can't do. 
Okay, thank you for clarifying, and I will look up that three one three. Yep, thank you. I think it's getting really late, so maybe this will be. Who knows if anybody? Just Evelyn talk. Throne. Thank you, <laughs> Morrisville. Uh, hopefully, um, can end on a positive note. I think we talked about a lot of things that happened with the storm. And, you know, I do, I thank everybody to know that we could sit in our house. Luckily, we were safe, but that I felt like people were going to be taken care of. And I think what's cool is that the community came together after that. And with only being here a year and a half, it, it, it really does feel different than where I lived before. And I appreciate that. I think the small businesses maybe didn't get the shout out that they deserved. And they stepped up. I mean, Oasis had a fundraiser for Moog's Joint. Um, Moog's had it for, Moog's Place had it for Moog's Joint. And Tom Moog said he was going to just use this use this opportunity of building back to help the community move forward because Johnson was so hit. You know, it's not just Morrisville, obviously. Uh, there were all sorts of little businesses everywhere. Who, who stepped up, provided everything, provided support, gave some of their profits for days, you know, to to uh, all different, you know, to the relief efforts. And so I just think that I'm just proud to live in this community. Good. Thank you. Uh, Tom Colia from Lawrenceville. I, uh, I've been in Lamoille County for 40 years. And this did not surprise me at all. And anything that, is, when it gets down to it, the people around here always joined in. It's the greatest community, uh, not just Morrisville, all the Morrisville special, all around Memorial County, all in this state. You, you have, everybody has seen it. So don't, if you're only bitten, don't worry. There's going to be people there uh, all the time to be helping out. That being said, uh, I got uh, five things, six things I'd like to read to you, and I'm going to hand them out. I don't need answers. What I would like to have you do is uh, email me the, the answers to the questions. And one is, because the EMS and the fire departments are, are uh, emergency responders along with our police department, do they have the authority, do you have the authority to pay or advance them in their wages now out of the $340,000 Funds already paid by the taxpayers, all the loan monies currently in place. Like I said, I don't need an answer. Why are the salary figure, figures from the last budget different from the current corrected salary figures? And what are the difference based on? That was the one you pushed out Friday, uh, Friday night. <clears throat> Why are the taxpayers paying overtime to directors who are not emergency workers are salaries and who can take time off in exchange for any necessary overtimes. Why are the taxpayers paying employees for benefits the employees choose not to take? Is this legal and equality as important? Is it ethical to ask the, the taxpayers to, do, to pay for those? Can I, can I please get a printout of the state Physical Recovery Fund Morristown received. I think that's uh, ARPA funds, the, uh, also known as ARPA funds. How much was received and how was it spent? If I could get a, a broad sheet on that. And are there any funds received by Morristown that are not corrected, uh, that not in this budget now? I know uh, there's, there's different uh, funds that come in, and I just wondered if there's any funds not that we don't know about that's that don't appear uh, in this budget. That's all. And that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll talk. Yes, we will. Thank you. Thank you. For yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Judy. Don. You get one too. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, this. Oh, I got two. Tom, you, you gave me two. So with that, I move to go into executive session because I find the premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body or a person involved at a substantial disadvantage.
second. I'm sorry. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. I move to go into executive discussion to discuss the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee. Subject to T1 VSA Section 313A3 to include Interim Town Administrator Jason Luno and Human Resource Director Paula Beatty. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed.